afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday, September the 12th, 2019. We have officially entered empty shelf territory. <laughs> it is... Uh, well, there's Elgato you know, the, the products there. The, your, your important... It's not the, yeah. This is huh. actually... Free advertising. It's free advertisement for Elgato. You know, we're kind of warming them in right now. You never know. They might... Hey, look, I mean, you couldn't get any more product... Play There's literally nothing else behind us. That's it. Well, we have the NordVPN thing up top. That's true. Right up, right up around here. We should probably we should probably make that bigger versus all of these boxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, welcome uh, back, ladies and gentlemen. It's another Tech Me Alpha podcast. Uh, we got another great show lined up for you here today, as always. Of course, I'm going to say that every time. I don't think there's going to be a time where we're going to start. I'm going to go, you know what? Today's show is going to be shit. <laughs> you know, one of these times you might. Yeah, maybe it will. News yeah. might be garbage and be like, you know it, what? It's it probably going to be a shitty show. It could be. It could be. Uh, it could be in the next couple of weeks. You know, when we're when we're struggling to put together the podcast versus your move and versus TwitchCon. Yes, uh, one of those two, if they even happen. Yes, we'll probably I'm, be starting up with. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be shit. It's well, this. I'm going to see how next week goes. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to know what the hell is going to happen with me and TwitchCon. Oh, you're by, not even sure. By Wednesday. Wow. I'm, dude, I'm sh I dude, my If we do, if we if you're not going, well, you know if I, you're not going, I'm not going. Yeah. Uh and if that's the case, bro, we've got we've got some phone calls to make and we've got some some sweet talking to get as much of that money back as humanly possible. Yes. Uh well, what will happen is we could probably get the hotel money back cuz I mm -hmm. think it's a 40 if you if you cancel be within 48 hours beforehand. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and plus, the hotel rooms are going to be booked. They'll oh, get rid of the rooms. Be like, they're going to go instantly. in seconds. Instantly. What we won't get our money back is for the flights, but we could get a credit. So if you need to fly anywhere else within a year, oh, then, right. That's then right. you'll get well, a credit. I'm, going, I'm literally going to Cali in November anyway. So well, if, you haven't yeah, if you haven't already I haven't paid, booked. Oh, well, then it's, it's, it's literally, it would, be, it would literally be you switching that over Although for another Yeah, kind of awkward because it's all on your card, though. It's under your name, though. Your ticket's under your name. Oh, okay. So I yeah. can still just move it to whatever date yep. and, and whatnot. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, look. We'll see. We hey, you know maybe what? Maybe we're still going. As of right now, I'm planning on going. Yeah. Uh, but it, it honestly is going to boil down to how this move goes. Because this hur if this hurricane didn't happen, yeah, I would have been like, okay, fine. But I spent two days literally doing virtually nothing. Yard work. And then yard work, uh, which kind of screwed everything. I had to take time off. I had to do all this stuff. But as of right now, we'll see. It's it's I, I would say I would say there's a seventy percent chance it's gonna happen. Yes, but on the offshoot that something fucky happens, and really at this point it can be it's any a, it's fucking a, it's thing. A, it's a move. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Buckle up, buckle up. But uh, yes, as you guys can see, the wall is empty. It is very empty. Um, it's very empty. It's very empty. I I took a day off streaming the other day. Yeah. Full day. Took a day off. Wow. Um, did some like voiceover stuff. And that felt that some, probably felt weird. Some it was, dude. It was very. In fact, it got to the point there was like a two hour period where I wasn't actually doing anything, you and I was thinking like, about it? I should probably go downstairs and stream <laughs> even if for two hours. And I said, Jeff, shut the fuck up. Stop, dude. Stop. I was in bed at nine thirty p.m. I I was I I did some packing. I got this, this all that wall shit done. done. Yeah, it's in bed at nine thirty p.m. I was up by ten. Woke up at ten o'clock in the morning. I felt like a million bucks. Wow, that's a solid. That's a twelve-hour dream. Twelve hour. Dream, hour. Uh, no, Kai woke me up. Kayla didn't wake wow. me up. Nothing. I think she knew I just needed to die in there for half a day. Dude, I did that a couple weeks ago, and it's true. I woke up. I felt reborn. Yes, I, I, dude, I've. It's been crazy, bro. It's been crazy. It only lasted for a day. Yeah, no, that was it. No, yeah, it, it, it wasn't even actually a full day. By the time the night came, I was tired again. Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah. but you know, the morning that there's a window. Whew, I felt great. Could have gone for a marathon. Yes, actually, I went out for a bike ride. There you go. I did that. How's the ass? It, it, it got used to it. So oh, I've, been, I've been biking enough now <laughs> that's, that's that my ass has gotten used to the discomfort that it brings after biking. Like being a prison bitch, after a while... You just get used to it. Hot dog down the hallway. Mm -hmm. Don't even need to use saliva. It just goes in. Uh, so I, I guess I don't have to ask how your week was because I already know uh, it was getting this stuff done and RP. That's it. That's the show. That's the show. We stayed over at my buddy's house because we, we lost power like the rest of the province. Hmm. Um, Hurricane uh, was it Dorian? Uh, came yes, through but they, and... they rearranged it because it was Nova Scotia too. Hurricane Donaire. Oh, oh I, saw, I saw the memes there. I said yes, it's pretty good meme. Hurricane Donaire. I'm came actually through. there for it. I'd I'm rather actually, it be yeah. called Hurricane Donaire. In I'm fact, I might it. call it Donaire. Thirty years from now, we talk about this hurricane. Call it Donaire. Hurricane, hurricane Donaire. Donaire. Why not? Yeah. So that happened. 
Um, I finally get my MRI tomorrow for my knee. Right. So that happens. I and I was I had my lawyer appointment to do the final uh, closing for the house, like right. to write yeah, the, yeah. the 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 check for the uh, deposit. Um, and I remembered, got a call that my appointment was tomorrow morning. So then mm. I had to rearrange. Now I might go to my lawyer. I go. I have to drive like an hour out to get it done, unfortunately, mm-hmm. um, and then come back in and go see the lawyer, and then I'm free. But right. uh, finally, I'll get to see what the fuck is going on with my knee. Hopefully, they see whatever it is, whatever it's pulled, and then uh, have well, surgery. It's Yeah, well, it's... And it's, wait a year for surgery. And then wait a year for surgery. Or maybe, against all odds, they find out you don't need surgery, you just need intensive physiotherapy. Well, we'll see. But my knee is a mess. Like, it pops yeah. and everything else, so I don't... Yeah. It'll, I'll be very surprised if it's just... Well, you sit on your knees all the time. Yeah. And but so it's possible that you... Ha- and I know you did like some fucking shit I popped to it. it. Yeah, I popped it. That I know where it, when it happened. Yeah. But, you know, the, sitting on the knees doesn't help. Definitely not. No, especially now. But uh, yeah. that wasn't the case. It was it was a pop. Like, it was a bad... It was a, a whiz bang. I guarantee when I find out, I'm gonna, it'll be a podcast. But guess what? I tore this, tore this, tore this, tore that. And now I need surgery. That's what's going to happen. That's a yikes from me, dog. That's a huge yikes from me. <laughs> Remind suck. me how old we are again. I'm 32. Okay. I'm turning 33, bro. I, and it dawned on me because my body's falling apart. My <laughs> my my sternum gets sore. Uh, my yeah. I, my indigestion, like, like I get heartburn and everything yeah. else. I have Zantex. I had to go to fucking shoppers uh, <laughs> last night and get a package of Zantex. You're going to be that guy in the Pepto-Bismol commercial. Straight, just fucking drinking Pepto. <laughs> just Pepto in the pocket. My knee's fucked. You know, everything's fucked. My hips, they crack and shit now. I'm just getting yeah. old, bro. Uh, well, it's a bit old, but it's also we sit all the time, all day. Yep. So it's a mixture of getting old plus yeah. sitting all the time. Yeah. I mean, more than an office worker would, because at least in the office, every once in a while, they force you to get up and actually go do some shit. Not me. If you're not reminding yourself. If I don't need to piss. I'm not getting I'm up. I'm literally not moving. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of fucking stupid. It is. Unfortunately, it's a habit. It's really hard to break. Yes. I've been trying to get myself to like once an hour to stand up, stretch, whatever, for like five minutes. Dude, Just my move. Fitbit has been telling me every hour <laughs> to keep... get up. I, it, it actually vibrates my wrist. I look at it. Ignore it. And I, I ignore it so like in order so that the, an animation comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it tells you how many steps you took over the last hour and if like, you should get up. Like three. Yeah. And it, <laughs> sometimes it's zero. And so most of the time it's zero. But it comes up and it does this little thing on the screen. <laughs> So just so that I'm not reminded, I, I if you tap the screen and it'll yeah. go away. So as soon as I see it, I, I like it's almost like I, I don't, <laughs> don't want to. I don't even want to see it because I'm just, I'm such an idiot. Like just not, get it's up. It's not reality if yeah, you don't no. see it. it. I feel the vibration and I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like fucking jeez, Jeff. Like get up and like just stretch. get up, move. Fucking just lazy walk around prick. a little bit. Drink yeah. some goddamn water and move. That's uh, water. I've got water on lock, but the getting up and moving part. <laughs> it's a little sketchy uh, to the point now where so you're going in for probably surgery. I'm going in for physiotherapy because the the uh, the interior of my hip joints on both sides, mm. even if I'm not sitting for long periods of time, let's say I want to uh, bend down and pick up something off the floor. Yeah. And then I stand back up. Both of the the tendons in the inside joint of my hip hip joint mm. pop pop, which for a while was just like, oh, it's cracking. And now it actually just hurts. Oof. Uh, and not like a small amount. It's hurting enough now that like subconsciously I'm changing how I'm walking yeah. to favor it. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, time to go to the doctor. Yeah. So I went to the doctor the other day and I had a lit dude. I had a list. <laughs> My phone's. Where is my phone? I, had, I had a fucking list. I got that, that fucking list on my phone. And then he comes in the door and I'm like, sit down for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I've he got was some like, probs, Doc. He was like, "What the hell is going on with you? You're only 30 years old." I said, "Wait." I've got more. <laughs> so I have like uh, physio for my hips and my lower back. Uh, I've got heart palpitations and 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 shit uh, all the time to the point where I'm getting an EKG here in like the next week. Wonderful. Set up for uh, food sensitivity to see if that's what's causing uh, all the shit that's going on in my scalp because uh, after seeing the uh, the uh, dermatologist and following her things for three months, it did literally nothing. Great. Um, I have to get a note for massage therapy for my insurance company. Uh, oh, I have doctor, to do that too. Doctor was I like, paid for the last two out of pocket for fuck's fuck sakes. Fuck rip. Yeah, I, go, I got a doctor's appointment next week, so I'm getting the damn written notice. Uh, for that exact reason. Yep. And then they got a litany of other bullshit. Wonderful. Uh, and so, you know, I've got blood tests and I've got physiotherapy and massage therapy trying to put myself back together. 
And which is ironic because this is the most active I've been I know, uh, listen, in years. Hey, you're looking better. I've got, you're working out. I put out eight pounds of muscle in the last two months. Nothing wrong with that, bro. There's nothing wrong with that. I got another boat. Ten pounds to go. Or eight, <laughs> eight pounds to go. It's the newbie gains. Bro. When you first start, you just fucking pack everything That's on, it, right? Yeah. And then you just... And then you'll... Then you'll yeah, yeah. You'll plateau. plateau. Yeah. I'm getting there. So I'm getting to the plateau part. But things, you know, uh, going well other than my hips wanting to separate themselves from my body. And your knee wanting to separate itself from your body. Dude, my, half my body wants... My chest is salty all the time. My, my hips are salty. My bad, too. But you know why your sternum's bad is because we sit all day with our arms in front of us. Yeah. And it tightens yeah, it this tightens whole this all up. up. Shit. And there's no amount of stretching you're going to do that's going to outpace... 10 hours in front of a computer with nah. your arms in front. Nah. Literally nothing. No. Nah. And so when you get up, you probably do this. It yep. just pops. Same. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts. Like, sometimes I can't pop it. So, like, it yeah. feels like I want to, and I'm trying, but, but it won't. It won't. It, won't. it also and just hurts. And it hurts. Yeah. And they tell the doctor, and he's like, you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Welcome to your 30s. There it is. Hey, guys. I, I know. we Adam and I just had a conversation about how old and shitty we are. But, uh, hey, take care of your bodies, okay? Because I know there's a lot of people out there that are probably like... You know, in their 20s right now. That's right. You know, maybe even in their teens. Probably right. not too many of you. Don't but sit all the damn time. Don't. Don't do it. Take it from me. You know, don't do it. Get up. Move. It's a bad idea. Learn bro. from our mistakes. It is a bad. It's a bad idea. I've never felt so old. Like sitting will do that to you. Like I've uh, ser like seriously, I remember we used to make those jokes when I was like 25. Be like, "Oh, I'm getting old." Uh -huh. yeah, no, no, no. It's like now I'm legitimately feeling well, older. Well, that's because at 20, 25, once in a while you'd wake up and you'd feel it. That's once true. In a once while. in a while. Now it's daily. D every day, bro. <laughs> every dude. It's so much so that the days that I don't feel like like that my body isn't sore, it's a yeah. blessing. Like, yes. and, I, and I realize I'm like, holy fuck. But you know, I feel but, normal today. But you know who feels like that? My 68-year-old father. <laughs> yes. I'm 30. Yes. I don't think my dad felt like this at 30 years old. He was also not sitting all the time like we are. That's true. Uh, so the key to that would be just, you know, we're still young enough that we get up and get moving again. Things will work themselves out. Mm. But in the interim, mm. fuck. And the, just the thought of being on the way to 40. Because it's, it's just... Re uh, try not to think about it that way. It's just crazy. That shit's gonna fuck you up. That's fucking what my brain. Ba and the fact <laughs> yeah. that I got a kid now too, it like adds to well, it. That, that yeah, I like think it that just also adds big time help. to it. Because I'm thinking yeah. to myself, you know, in eight years, I'm gonna be less than that. Seven years, I'm gonna be forty. Dude, when I have a kid, I'm gonna feel eighty. <sighs> Instantly, light switch I'm gonna go off. Shit's real. It's terrible. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, talk about video games here. No, oh. but sometimes we like to talk about our old age. Why not? And there's probably people listening that are like, dude, motherfuckers, you're not even that old. I'm like, you know, well, I'm 40. It. It's not necessarily our age. It's, it's, it's that for since we were about 23 years old, we've sat in a chair for 10 to 13 hours a day. Yeah. yeah. And didn't really exercise much in all of that time. No. Like at all. No. And that will do it. That will do it. And we were, I, I, was, I was already like pre-fucked uh, from being super tall and growing fast. Like my low back... Super fucked. Mm. Like 15 years well, you're old. You're a giant, bro. Yeah. yeah. Knees, 15. <laughs> Dude, I remember you complaining about your knees when you are like 20. Yeah. You're like, yes. fuck, bro, my knees. I'm like, Jesus. bad. And that was me in the gym and like taking care of myself and shit. Yeah. My knees were trash. Now, yeah. that was back then. Only one knee made noise when I walked upstairs and downstairs. <laughs> now, both of them making noise going up and downstairs. And the hips. <laughs> hips, crack, crack, knees. Everything's just dying. Uh, video oh, games. Fuck. Call of Duty. Uh, you know, the re-release of the only Call of Duty that matters. Well, that's not true. There's a couple of good Call of Duties. But the um, Modern Warfare remake that they're doing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, they put out a video with uh, that was showing, or NVIDIA put out a video with RTX. So ray tracing, mm -hmm. on and off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be real with you, bro. You looks can click good. that and you can check it out. I'll check it out I'll right be real now. With you. While it looks good, it is not worth the performance hit. It's one of those things that, like, if you don't have a side-by-side, -side you wouldn't look know. at the comparison, like, 90, at least, I would say 90% of people wouldn't see the difference between the two things. It's adding, like, because here's the thing. In Call of Duty, I mean, you know how the games are. Everything's predetermined. Is this like, the link here? Is, is it on here? Or? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the first one's gears. The second one is because it's a combined little thing topic here. Okay. But the second one is it should be I think Call of Duty. Okay. Um. So, I mean, it's getting to the point that even in this video, they've got to put green boxes sometimes around the area that's going to show you the difference between the two. Um. But it looks. 
Even with it, with and without, it looks yeah. fucking great. Yeah, it's a good looking video game. But here's the thing: it's Call of Duty. Everything is a predetermined hallway, right? Mm-hmm. It's not an open world. No. So that allows the game artists to bake in a lot of shadows and lighting, kind of cheat it uh, a bit. Whereas, like in an open, open, open world where there's a lot of like more generated kind of environments yeah. that the artist doesn't have their direct hands on all the time. That's oh. where RTX is usually a little bit more obvious, right? Yeah. Uh, because the artist can't like ba- bake in a bunch of like shadows or uh, or lighting situations to make it look more realistic. Yeah. Um. But in this, so in yeah, this I'm case, watching it. Yeah. You can it's, see. It, yeah, yeah. There's some. There's some with some lighting. It you can. It, there's a noticeably diff- a difference. Yeah. But I only notice it because. They almost stop on it. They and like they point pause it, it out, and right? they point it out with the box. If the, it was just kind of going, I wouldn't the know. The biggest one there, and I don't because you skipped through it, but towards the end, I watched a, the whole thing. There, yeah, so there's a spot where um, they're showing in a room um, when yep. they turn it on, and there's actual shadows that get added to the scene that just aren't there without. Yeah, I'm watching that RTX, now. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm watching that now. Yeah, so that's the only one where you look at it, and you go, okay, that's a that's substantial, substantial difference. Yeah, but the rest of it. It like unless you had a side by side, you wouldn't probably know. wouldn't see it. Yeah, and that's fine, but because in PC gaming, you've always had loads of options to make games look better, but they're kind of incremental. Like, you know, in some games, you get to, like, say, the high setting, Mm -hmm. and then you step it up to ultra, and you have to fucking look to see the difference between high and ultra. Yep. But you know it's there, and if you can get enough of the ultras turned on, the overall difference is huge. If you only turn on one ultra You wouldn't really know. Not a fucking chance. Uh, it's not even uh, worth the performance uh, it, like, hit uh, on your computer. It's not even worth the, the stress on it. Which is exactly what the RTX problem is right now. In, is that in order to get that going, like 2080 Ti like mine, mm-hmm. you'll probably do good FPS in 1080p mm-hmm. with RTX. Mm-hmm. You're not going north of 1080p. No. You're just not. No. Um, unless you've got two 2080 Ti's. At which point, you also have holes in your pockets from all the money that you just have carrying around. Hey, some people, hey, they do. You know what? They've got dicks the size of tree just trunks. Massive shack dick mm-hmm. all over the place. Yeah. The um so for that it doesn't really work and then it, or it's not really necessary. It's nice to have but I wouldn't take the performance hit. Now the con- contrasting this to make the, to make the point as well uh, is everyone's talking about Digital Foundry and everyone else is talking about how good Gears of War Five looks and mm. it looks fucking dope graphically probably the most if not close to the most impressive game currently available they really push the shit out of the Unreal Engine and they optimize the fuck out of it and it runs beautifully on the Xbox One X and on PC as well I'm watching and that trailer things now. look fucking good. Um, and that's not, there's no RTX involved. That's all just traditional ass, uh, artist based and engine based lighting, uh, without all the fancy bullshit. So you're going to get the high FPS, high resolution, and it's going to look that fucking good on anything you play it on pretty much yeah. anything you play it on. You want a 65 inch OLED? It's going to look, look great. good because the HDR implement implementation for this dude is crazy. They took the standard stuff, but then they did AI uh, an AI program that scanned over a ton of Xbox exclusive titles to uh, come up with an algorithm for the lighting across all titles to enhance the already like uh, pre-done HDR content for the game. So the HDR, uh, Digital Foundry was saying the HDR content for this game is actually like really fucking good. Not very many games actually use HDR all that well. Hmm. Uh, Shadow of Rise of the Tomb Raider is one. I think that's the latest one, or, or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, whatever the fuck the latest Tomb Raider one is. And then this, probably the only two that really, really do it well. And I think they said Gran Turismo's latest one also does the HDR pretty well. But, I mean, it is a good fucking looking game. It looks dope. It looks good. I know the gameplay itself is hit or miss. You know, it's not too bad. The game is getting pretty good reviews. But it just from the, in this discussion, the, the, the standpoint of compare that to RTX with, uh, with Call of Duty. And mm-hmm. yeah, the RTX looks really fucking neat. But it's also one of those things where a lot of RTX, because it happens in like reflections and like like uh, water and stuff like that. When you're playing a game like Call of Duty and everything's going 500 miles an hour, you're not seeing dick any of that shit. Yeah, it is a blur. That's why those games could work at like 60 FPS and the graphics could be like a little less than than optimal because nobody's fucking paying that close attention. Nobody's running running up to the side of a fucking vehicle in the game on a map and going, yeah, no. Fucking look at those textures, bud. Ain't nobody got time for that. If you do, it's going to look like the N64. But when you're just playing the game, 
You it don't see fine. the shit. Yeah, it, it looks, looks fine, fun. right? Because it's it's like it's like uh, when people were um, originally chirping uh, Forza Horizon when it first came out, and they were like, "Yeah, the environmental textures and stuff aren't all that good." And then you're like, "Stop for a second, you go, what game are you playing right now? You're playing a racing game where you're driving 200 miles an hour most of time." Who the fuck yeah. is taking the time out to go look at a daisy in yeah. a field and go, well, you know what? That shit, 200 miles an hour, looked pretty good, but now that I'm looking up close and I parked my car. Yeah. Now that I've lost the race, <laughs> this this looks terrible. This ain't it. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know. RTX has got its, is, is, is like, ray tracing in general. I shouldn't just call it RTX, but just ray tracing in general is going to be cool eventually. But right now, there are so few game, few games that are it's worth the performance hit because it's the most substantial performance hit of anything that we've got right now, pretty much. Short of going up to like 4K, mm. it's the biggest hit. Just not worth uh, worth the meme. But uh, yeah, you can check that out. Uh, both of those, I think, were done. One through NVIDIA's YouTube channel. The other uh, video we were watching here, you guys can check it out, is the, uh, I believe, the Digital Foundry uh, YouTube channel. Who They do, God bless Digital Foundry. They do fantastic work. Uh, next up, Resident Evil, Jeff. Oh, mm. caught your attention. Oh, you got me. Wait until I disappoint you. Ah. Mm. All right. So, uh, Resident Evil Project Resistance. You can watch that trailer if you want, as you are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, basically looks like, and you're going to notice this immediately, the first thing that comes on is probably going to be Left 4 Dead. Yep. Uh, somebody's probably screaming, Pills here! Uh, <laughs> and then towards the end, where they, uh, where to my knowledge, they fuck with the lore of Resident Evil a little bit, uh, and, uh, and then turn it into Dead by Daylight. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Uh, so at first it's Left for Dead, and then all of a sudden, Mr. X, X gonna give it to you, is now being controlled by a dude wearing a VR goggles and, and neato gloves, uh, and, uh, is now gonna chase after the Left for Dead crew. Turning it into Dead by Daylight. Now, we don't know, uh, I guess, to this point, which one of those two games is going to lean more heavily into. But Dead by Daylight has a pretty big following, so maybe this is them oh, looking yeah. at it and going, hey, maybe we can do this and slap the Resident Evil name on it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's almost becoming a genre at this point. I know? think so. I think it's it, it, it's on that, depending on, on how cusp. this game does, mm. there might be just a genre for it where you're going to see other, because it's easy to make when you think about it. It's a game mode, it's a like game a battle mode. royale. Yeah, it's a game mode. It's, a, it's, like, it's like a branch off of yeah. a, a And it isn't like game. ultra popular, but it is uh, one that people seem to stick with and, and play and grind out to, to get some like replayability. Yeah. Um, and you know what? They're not half bad. I, I the um, Yeah, Dead by Daylight. I think it's the, the latest one, right? Well, Dead by Daylight's the one that's popular on Twitch. Uh, like, okay, it's maybe a, it's not Dead by the newest one that I was playing there. Oh, um, um, fuck, what's that called? Are you talking about the one that we were playing together? No, it's it's the one that's faster faster paced. The one that just came out not long ago. I did. Oh, a, I know what you're talking about. I did I can't a couple think of, sponsor I can't think of the streams name. for them. Somebody will the say it in the chat, but yeah, that probably. game's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, that game's more fun to me than De- uh, Death Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I do believe the same makers of Dead by Daylight. Um, but yeah, Death Garden mm. is is a lot of fun. Uh, it's a much faster paced version of Dead by Daylight, and it's a good time. Um, so it kind of sucks to see Resident Evil. You, and know, you know, it's like the like, B team working on this yes, game right it now, right? Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, they're like, just using the property's name to sell some games. It in there. You know what? Yeah. Hey, I think that the Resident Evil property, the IP, could could lend itself nicely to a Left 4 Dead type game. Because yes. you've got the liquors, you know, you've got other uh, types of zombies. You've got so many types crocodiles. of zombies. Crocodiles. I mean, you've got all kinds yeah. of different, like, famous Resident Evil mobs. Yeah. Or creeps, or whatever you want to call yeah. them. Uh, that could lend well to that. Almost any horror game has enough baddies that you could, if you wanted to. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Silent Hill would be the same thing. You could do that. Yeah. Uh, Silent Hill would be... Uh, Silent, well... Resident Evil and Silent Hill both kind of have that with with Mr. X, mm-hmm. uh, where and and then Silent Hill's uh, Pyramid Head, mm-hmm. where it's like the theoretically technically unkillable. Well, you've also got nem- you got the nemesis, nemesis for like uh, the for Kool Aid Res- Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> just busts busts in walls. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we haven't seen enough of it. No, I'm going to assume it's going to be mediocre. Yes. And why is it the main characters? Like, I just saw those four characters there. 
Yeah, it, it's, they look generic. They as fuck. look so generic, bro. They, you know what they look like? They kind of look like just like a, a C Netflix horror movie cast. Yes. Where they're actually. I need a black. Where they're. Self, I need a white. They're like self aware. Yes. Like like they break the fourth wall in the movie that they know that it's a bad horror yeah. movie. Yeah. And so they're wearing campy like clothing. Like the stereotypical, you got white dude jock with like a fucking, yep. uh, you know, his football jacket on. And you got like, yeah, the black guy, the, the with, black dude with, with the, the red. Yeah, with the urban <laughs> style. And he's just like, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. He probably didn't sound like that. Shit, motherfucker. I wish he did, though. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I'd probably like the game more. I'd if buy it. Sound, yeah, I'd buy it just for Yo, something. Resident Evil, hire me. I'll do that exact like, same thing. Make the most make the most stereotypical racist yes, characters just ever. Michael Bay it up. Put all of them together. Just right there. Fucking go. Buy, I'm buying it. Sold. I'm in. What's next? Uh, 48 states. This is like sort of, but not entirely gaming related, but since it's Google involved. Uh, 48 states, which I don't know if you know this, Jeff, is uh, damn near all of them. Yeah, there's launching, what fifty of them, right? Or there yeah, was fifty one, and now there's and, and 50. they have and they have districts and stuff like well, or uh, districts or or you know like Puerto Rico, and then you got DC, oh. whatever the fuck. Like we have provinces and territories, and they've got whatever the fuck. Anyway, forty eight states launch an anti an antitrust investigation into Google. Uh, after all of them are afraid that it is approaching a monopoly in advertising, the search engine space, etc. Uh, and also on a tangent here, uh, or, or tangentially here, uh, Facebook is under a similar investigation, but only a couple of states are on that one, but they're investigating into, uh, Facebook, uh, of course, for its possible pushing monopolization of the social media space on this side of the pond. Um, the Facebook thing is neither here nor there for me. Facebook is fucking huge and it, uh, and it runs you know, Instagram and, you know, it's got messenger services and shit. And yeah, it's good. But it isn't Google. No. Google. On another level. I'm, I'm firmly Google in the camp that the Google, I know, I know that on paper, like if you want to get real fucking hard nosed semantic about it, Google is not a monopoly, but God damn, it is as humanly close to being in a monopolistic situation as you can get. Without technically being a monopoly. Yeah. I mean, it is riding the shit to the point where they had to create that holdings company alphabet yeah. to just make it look like it was not turning into a monopoly to get it off the name of Google so they could spread that out across more uh, more names just trying to keep... Because this shit's happened, but this isn't the first time this has happened. No. And it's probably not going to be the last time it's going to happen. But I think if anyone's being honest with themselves, yes, Google has too many hands in the cookie jar. In my opinion, well, they I mean, I use all the. So I'm not so paranoid. I'm not using their services, but I think I think it would be crazy to say that Google isn't uh, probably the most influential company on the planet. On the planet, at the very least, the Western world, right? Well, yes, I mean, Asia's you know, got like their own versions of shit over there, right? Yes, but yes. like here, it's it, it's Google. It's Google. <laughs> They're in your house. They're everywhere. The shit's a verb, for God's sake. Yes. Google shit. Yes. Well, it is what it is. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, back into the gaming news, more specifically, but similar uh, similar kind of idea here. Nintendo has won that uh, that case that they brought in uh, to court in the UK. Oh yeah. Uh, took that uh, took that to the high court to uh, force the internet service providers to block or greatly restrict access to, I guess, four specific websites uh, anyway that help pirate switch games and then also provide uh either modding services or have tutorials on how to mod your systems etc etc they want to have uh, the isps block those uh because they can't just keep taking them you know sending cease and desist so they're going in and saying hey guys just take them off the web yeah get rid of them yeah did your power just flicker it definitely did like i just heard your ups yeah, it came on. Come, uh, come on. We're okay. All right, we're still going. Um, yeah, so that, that went through. They won that. And that's actually pretty big uh, because that probably means that they're going to attempt to do that in other places now. Oh, I would imagine. And, and at the very least, it sets a precedent for them in the UK. So if anything else happens in the future, they just walk into the court and they go, Hey, guys, got some more websites for you. Here they are. Get them off of here. Done. Uh, here's one that's going to make you cry. And... Um, Honestly, I, I'm strongly considering. 
I, you watch this video. But I, I want you to to watch it and just turn the volume up enough that they'll just hear it come through the mic a little bit. So they pause it for a second. This is Civilization VI Battle Royale. Worst voiceover. Wow. Oh, it gets better. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. Wait, this wait. voiceover is one of the I'm worst. Pretty neat, huh? Pretty neat, huh? He didn't even say that in the proper inflection on, on no. how it's pretty neat. Like, Dude, at one point, wow. at one point. Oh my god. That helicopter's mine too. It goes fast. Oh boy. Those are raiders. They hate everyone. This is bad. I found a new it's embarrassing, bro. It's real bad. It's embarrassing, bro. It's almost like people don't respect the tools of senseless destruction. Well, not entirely senseless. We're all trying to get to the last surviving place in the world so the last one standing can get onto a lander and fly up to a spaceship that's leaving this planet to go somewhere else. Battle Royale. I gotta, I gotta turn it off, brother. That goes on way too long, too. I gotta, I gotta say, what does it even, what does it, any of that even mean? I get, well, what, what? It, first of all, the writing, fucking god awful. Second of all, the delivery of that voiceover might be the worst I've ever seen for any video game, move, anything with any, and and especially on something that has like a name like Civilization. Yes, where the, it sounds like they just pulled somebody at the office and said, bro, they went on Fiverr. Go get her done. They got a five dollar voiceover. At one point, when he says, "This is my helicopter," it's actually either a different microphone or he punched right. in and he ate the mic. Ooh. Oh. They do. Oh. It's like, you know what? You know what they did? They gave this guy a bunch of lines. He just said them, and then Stitched and together. then they just stitched it together like like an endless loop of lines like that really poorly, like very. Civilization Six, Death Match. That's a big yikes for me, dog. Red Death. Yeah, Red... Yeah, actually, it's called Red Death. It's the death of something. <laughs> of the name of civilization. And it's gone. Why? Jeff, I have a question for you. Did anyone, at any point in time, ever, say to themselves, you know what makes Civilization Six better? A Battle Royale mode. Better yet. That voiceover, too. Matched with a battle royale. If you're gonna drop a stupid fucking bomb like that, you better get somebody better crush that it. is gonna fucking sell this shit like to the point where it's like you, need you know Billy what? Fucking maze. Yes, it's it's yes, yes, yes. Because it's that campy. You it's need, that campy. You need Billy Isn't fucking Isn't Billy Mays dead? Yes. So resurrect them. <laughs> put them on marionette strings. Yes. And have him do the That's fucking the voiceover. That's the only way. That this shit actually works. Bro, this is such a joke that I wouldn't have been surprised at the end if they said, April Fools, we got you, bitches. Civilization Six is coming out soon. There's not a chance we're doing a battle royale. If they came up with that, I'd been like... <laughs> Instead, they're selling, a, they're selling a real thing this here. Is, this is real. This Jeff. is real. This is somebody had to spend time making this. I can't believe it. When somebody said to that in the chat, I was like streaming the other day, and they were like, Adam... 
<laughs> Civilization Six has a BR lol, and I was like, "What? No, you're joking, no. right?" No, they're not. And then you watched that. And you watched it, and you died. And I died on the inside. The soul left you just, my body. You probably could. You probably just sat there and was like, "Yeah," for like a, a, like three minutes, which like the trailer goes on for. And why does it go on like, so long? I. <laughs> Everything about it is bad. Poor choice all around. It's going to bomb. Now, all it's going to do is just make people question what the fuck they were ever thinking. Oh, my God. Uh, you know it's not going to sell any more copies. No. That's for sure. Hell no. It's bad. There you go. Let's forget that even happened. So for the uh, the zero people that were asking for a Civilization Six Battle Royale mode, great news. It's coming. Have fun. Red Death. Speaking of the Red Death, GameStop is to close 180 to 200 of its 5,700 global stores between now and the end of the year. And the start of what is apparently scheduled to be more closures to come over the next two years as they cut back. Apparently 95% of their stores are profitable, but as their CFO said about this, and I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck he means by this, while that is an impressive statistic, we have a clear opportunity to improve our overall profitability by de-densifying our chain. I still don't know what that means. De-densifying. Yes. I'm going to Google it. I mean, I can take a guess at it. Did you see what I just did there? I was, Google. It's a verb. It's a verb. You know what you're not going to do? What? Ask Jeeves. I'm not going to ask Jeeves, ever. <laughs> I, haven't even heard, I haven't even heard of them in fuck God knows how long. <laughs> All right, here we go. The act or process mm. of making or becoming less dense. Mm. Well, that's what it sounds like. De-densifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck me, dude. <laughs> 90. Okay, let me get this straight. 95% of their stores are, are profitable. profitable. Apparently. I, for one, I call bullshit. Well, my first question was, is it on what metric are you measuring profitability? And are they a franchise? Uh, I don't know if they're franchised or not. It's possible. Because if they're a franchise, they might mean corporately 95% of their stores. Yes. And not uh, the franchisee stores. Well, let's put it this way. They weren't being real specific yeah. about the profitability part. Well, even if they were, even if they are profitable, how profitable are they really? Not. Are we talking... $10? You know what they're doing? They're de-densifying <laughs> their bank account. Yes. Is what they're doing. I'm going to tell you something right now, Adam. What? When GameStop comes out and they say, listen, we've got still 5,700 stores. That's a lot All of right? stores. That's dude. a fuck. That's more that's, than I thought there was. Nice. Be, I actually thought there was probably about 180 to 200 <laughs> left. But no, apparently there's 5,700. 5, Hundred brick and mortar stores. That is so much money. There's so much money you're never going to get back. All right. So, yeah. Out of those 5,700, he's telling me 95% of them are profitable. Yes. So they're doing so great. They're at nine. Think about this for a second. 95% of 5,700 brick and mortar stores. That is 5,415 out of the 5,700. Okay. So, so they're closing currently. All of their, their almost, shitty. Almost. Almost every one of their non profiting stores. Yes. And almost. You, and you mean to tell me this out of a company that is doing so well? Because, dude, 95% of. 5,700 stores being profitable each and every month. Given the business they're in, especially. That's nice. You can't you you can't complain about that. But the fact that we keep hearing all the shit we're hearing, mm. people are losing their jobs, mm. stores are closing. Yeah. You mean to tell me that you guys are doing so great that all you need to do at this point is just de-densify? De densify Is de-densify your portfolio mm. just to make it even more efficient because yeah. 95%? Pff, we can make that 100. You know what that really just means is we have 5,700 brick and mortar stores, and brick and mortar doesn't actually work anymore, so we're de-densifying the brick and the mortar, <laughs> and we're getting rid of it entirely. Yes. We're a wrecking ball coming in. We're going to go from 5,700 down to probably less than 2,500 yes. over the course of five years. Yes, probably two. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ones that remain are going to be repurposed entirely into selling exclusively Pokemon keychains. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going to become specialty stores. That's it. Of fucking stupid shit that you buy. 50 shades of Pikachu keychain. Maybe a Merrill. Wonderful. Tossed in there for flavor. Probably a replica Link, you know, Legend of Zelda sword. Bro. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Dedensify, dude. De- I, I've heard I've heard a lot of verbs and adjectives and different De- nouns and things. Dude, that was the most heard business all. ass fucking verbiage that I have heard in forever. Bro, he had to search the dictionary to find a word that didn't sound like failure. Yes. And sounded like a a choice. Like yes. a, like a, with purpose. Yeah, exactly. That that wasn't a bad like it's not like we're in trouble. Yeah, it sound intelligent. We're ninety five percent profitable. It sound intelligent. But we're gonna de densify Dedensify. our portfolio. Synergy. Boom. Ninety five percent. We're gonna bump mm. that rate up damn near a hundred. That's right. Close all your stores. Silos. Just close them. You 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 know these you know business buzz. GameStop is gonna be blockbuster. Machine learning within within ten within ten years, bro. <laughs> Machine learning, <laughs> fucking Jesus, Christ. fuck off. <laughs> the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Those were <laughs> fuck off. Oh, I ain't got the energy for shit. this shit. Oh my god, it's just business. Uh, that's like part of why I got out of business is that it's a bunch of people that have degrees and they're not stupid, but it's like they just throw their degree out the window and they go, "All right, I'm gonna replace all of my degree with buzzwords." We're gonna de de-densify the cloud <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with machine with learning, machine learning <laughs> <laughs> to synergize our portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah and then fucking three oh, weeks later there's gonna be a fucking tweet yeah i've decided to to, to leave the company after 28 years of, yeah. of, of i'm uh voluntarily yeah. stepping down i just want to you know i've done it all i just want to go and as pursue it, some passion as it turns out the company is de-densifying their upper management <laughs> <laughs> they're replacing me with some machine learning <laughs> <laughs> fuck me oh shit amazon's alexa uh, is taking over Oh man! Yeah, fuck me, something senseless, dude. <laughs> Fucking GameStop, bro. Uh, it's gonna be a meme here for the next two years. We're every, we're just gonna keep talking about how every fucking, few weeks, like once a quarter, there's gonna be some gonna GameStop be news, and we're just gonna say they're just de-densifying <laughs> their portfolio until eventually they're just it's gonna be no more. It's completely de-densified. It's densified completely. It's gone. There's nothing left and to de-densify. <laughs> It's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, fuck. shit. Um all right. After that, what do we got here? Let's see. Final Fantasy 7 remake got another trailer because Tokyo Game Show is currently happening. Uh or I don't think it might be over now. This one I don't fucking know. Uh the trailer's good. Yeah, bro. This I, 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 did you see it yet? I didn't see it, but I, I'm already sold on this game, man. I'm already I'm already sold on this game completely. Uh, I just want I just want to not have the voice acting be so fucking like you know the voice acting still reminds me of like Titus laugh. Uh, must be in. Yeah, looks pretty though. It looks really good. Music sounds dope. Ooh, Seth Roth. It's it's you know what though it's the your, writing is also bad. It's bad, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's probably because of the translation. You know, like, dude, I'm not I'm not giving them any leeway for translations. 2019. I suppose you're right. If this was 1994, and we were translating SNES games. Oh wow, this is the church scene. Yes, it is. Wow, they did it. Bro, this is gonna be fire. Also, they dedicate they 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 chose which version of Aerith. Uh, we're getting Aerith. Oh, we're getting Aerith. We're getting uh, we're getting the, Ooh, the Mike titties. Tyson lisp. So they're showing that's when he dresses up as a girl or whatever. Mm-hmm. That guy. That wasn't terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's a playboy. He's Cloud. You led us on a merry chase, Aerith. It's gonna be fire, bro. Uh, you know, maybe I maybe just stick with Japanese voiceover. You could do that too, but then I have to read, and that sucks like a lot. I just, you know, it, it's like some of it's good, like some of the voice acting is fine, and mm. you still got to have that like Final Fantasy JRPG feel as well. You don't want it to be like The Last of Us, where you got like fucking, you know, Academy Award winning actors going in there and fucking giving performance of a lifetime. I think part of it needs to be a bit campy, but not overly campy. You know what I mean? Like it needs yeah. to still feel. 
because that's part of the authenticity of a JRPG you know what, as well. You know what would make me feel a little bit better about it, though, is like, for example, that church scene is if when they did the voiceover, they at least took the effort to make it sound like they were standing in, in, in a, a church. fucking church. Yeah. Instead, every piece of voice acting is like crystalline, yeah. super crisp and clear. Yeah, it's coming from your Neumann. Regardless of where U87 the fuck, in yeah. fucking California. Doesn't matter where they're standing or yeah. what's going on. They could be on, on a mountain. They could be a the nuclear wind bomb is... going off, and it sounds like they're in my ear just yeah. whispering sweet nothings. Because they are. Into a $17,000 microphone. Because they are. Uh, that would probably help a bit. Yeah, because it it would it like, uh, but yeah, the the I've uh, it is Final Fantasy VII, so you know you don't want them to to step away too far from the original writing and and whatever. Which if you went back and read it, is obviously you know there's some campy stuff in there. But honestly, I don't remember being that campy. I mean, I haven't played it in a long time. I just know JRPGs in general have this. This Japanese, um, there's always a, a, a over bit American of it. Uh, centralized uh, uh, or sensationalized view of America, where where you have their game, but they 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 create it for us as well. Like they know, yeah, yeah. and so they they it's almost like it's almost as if, say for example, your girlfriend, for yeah, example, yeah. right? Say you go to the Philippines and meet yes. your family or something. Yes. And you're trying way too hard to fit in. So like you're you're like you're like wearing you're wear, like wearing some sort of Filipino attire. I'm I'm making like an example, Which right? Which would look like a bra and panties on me, probably. There you go. So you're wearing like a <laughs> Filipino attire. Yes. You you've cooked some food and you're like trying to present it because you think you're being you're you're, you're yes. doing what you're supposed to do but in reality you're trying too hard and it's coming off and like they don't actually do they any don't of actually that shit. do any of that shit yeah. so so they're looking at you like you know what stupid american you know he's <laughs> you know okay it is you what tried. it is you tried but yeah. we still like you but swing and a miss but that's kind of what it's like they yeah. they create this shit so that it comes off almost like dated it's like dude we don't do like we don't do that that's not that's how those games yeah. always felt to me so yeah. the, so i don't want it to be too realistic but I know I the writing can improve though. I mean, Jesus, man. Like some lines are like, really? I mean, they just sound like one liners. They sound like Everything a, sounds like a one liner. Yeah. It, and everything sounds like it's somebody it's like they're like almost like aha. And they're like five years old. Yeah. It's it's, it's like and, it, and it's almost like they think it's almost like when they say something, they they're they know that what they said is like they're like, gotcha, bitch. Gotcha, like ah, ha, ha. And it's like they, if they, but they're just if, having a casual conversation. That's it. Yeah, it's like they're cracking a joke, but they're they're almost like laughing at their own joke because they. It's fucking. It's, it's fucking weird. Weird. Bro. It's weird, bro. It's fucking weird. It's weird. And I don't remember Final Fantasy VII being like that. Reading it, um, like Final Fantasy VII is a like tonally pretty dark. It is a dark game. And so like, I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's uh, you know we'll we'll see. I mean, it's gonna look great. It's probably gonna play really well. Bro, uh, it's episodic, and just shoot me now, because that is just stupid. I, I hate that so much, bro. If this was a, if this was a full game and this shit was coming out like soon, I'd be pretty jazzed right now. I'd be pretty jazzed, bro. Yeah. I, I've said this before, and I'll just say this one time. Yeah, they could have came out with the game for one hundred and twenty nine ninety nine. I would have paid the full one twenty nine ninety nine yeah. for the whole fucking game, all two hundred hours or one hundred and fifty hours of it, or whatever they had going on. I'd be much happier than that than paying thirty or forty dollars per game for per episode and oh, waiting bro, six months to a year. Bro, you think you're paying thirty or forty dollars? Then paying seventy nine ninety nine per episode once a year. Absolutely. You're going to be at least two hundred and forty. We're going to be deep. a console deep. We're Probably. literally going to be. Hey, we've just spent the amount of money to spend on this game. I could have bought the new fucking PlayStation. That's right. It's coming. It's fucking coming. Fuck me, senseless. You know what's not coming? Pretty much anything from Bioware. <laughs> What has uh, Bioware been up to anyway? Well, let me tell you, okay. because they just put out a statement here uh, the other day. Okay. They were like, hey guys, remember, we're still a company that you used to give a fuck about, even like a year ago. Um, uh, but yeah, they put out a, uh, a statement about what's to come, uh, and the long short of it is nothing. Uh, they said, hey, we've got some Anthem updates for the five people still playing the game. Uh, following that, there's an expansion coming out soon uh, to the Old Republic MMO, which apparently there are still people playing. And honestly, if we're being serious here, probably orders of magnitude more people are playing that than Anthem, so fine, reasonable. Uh, and then they just pulled the, and then stuff we can't talk about yet. 
So they announced that they're putting out content for a game that they should have just canned and forgot about. Stop putting money into it. It's not going to be profitable. It's not coming back. You're not pulling a No Man's Sky. Let's be fucking honest here. It's dead. It's gone. It was dead on arrival? Yes. And now it's really dead. I'm so happy I never bought that game, bro. I'm so happy because there's been times where I've been like where I bought a hype game. Oh yeah. Where I pre ordered it or I just got it ready. Oh yeah. And then just really just never even played it or just to put it in for fucking four or five hours, never touched it again. I'm so happy they never got my money. I'm so incredibly grateful. Dude, this is this is this is uh, Anthem is a is a bad video game. Bro, just make fucking uh Bioshock games. Well, that's not them. That's two K. Oh, more, don't worry. That 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 will happen eventually, but you know what? Bioware is Mass Effect. Oh yes, yeah, they're dead. Bioware, I, yeah, is for some reason, Dragon I, Age. Yeah, for some. Okay, they have Dragon Age coming, right? They are Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, but that's which I mean, we don't have a new one coming. Technically, though. at this point, would probably be their best play with Star Wars where it's at right now. Probably would have been a pretty good idea, but you know. Mass Effect is Dunsky, bro. That 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 franchise, I, they're going to come out, I guarantee they're going to come out with another Mass Effect for the next gen. Mass and, Effect in one of those places where where there's still a lot of diehard fans. Why don't they that, do an MMO for Mass Effect? Hmm, MMOs are a bad plan right now, especially on a company like Bioware who already has an MMO running in the Old Republic. Uh, Apparently it must be profitable. They must be doing something right there. Well, it's profitable enough. What would you rather? Would you rather... A, a deep, Mass a deep uh, MMO Mass Effect game or another campaign Mass Effect? I would want another uh, single player Mass Effect. Yeah, a hundred percent of the time, because you're going to get way better story delivery, way better character development, mm. and you're not going to have to like watch a company that barely knows I how to tie right. shoes. Yeah. Try All right, and let do me an rephrase it. Let me rephrase this. If an actual company that knew what the fuck they were doing with MMOs, <laughs> which there's only a few. If they could create the Mass Effect MMO, would you rather that? Would would you if 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 you knew a, a Mass Effect MMO could come out and it would do reasonably well mm. and it could serve its purpose, mm. would you prefer that or would you still prefer to have another campaign? The only MMO of Mass Effect that I would ever want to see would be if you took Star Citizen, if it actually ever happened, mm. and I don't mean like <clears throat> the half completed one; I mean the fully realized. Yeah capacity of star citizen mm. and painted it mass effect universe because mass effect does have everything you could ever possibly want for an mmo in terms of the lore yeah the 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 world building that's already in place uh the characters <coughs> the races everything is there yeah for an mmo yeah it's in place it's done but mmos are just not it right now when like world of warcraft classic is what's coming out doing big numbers. Unless you're a Korean MMO that does well for like, let's say two years for a bunch of people grinding the fuck of your game in a PC bong in the middle of fucking Seoul, Korea. It ain't it. Yeah. It just ain't it. Yeah. And Mass Effect is, or was anyway, one of the most impressive pieces of science fiction that we had gotten outside of movies and books. Mm -hmm. In our entire lifetime. The first Mass Effect was like laid the foundation for what is still still I still consider it technically to be one of the most impressive science fiction. It was fiction very similar to work. Star Trek. It was very similar like it had that vibe to it. Well, the thing about it was that it was that there was there was just enough grounding in reality and so much so much universe and world building in terms of the science behind everything and like the the codex in that game, the amount of voice over is a lot work. It's that impressive. is just going and l learn about the the universe and everything is insane. And so it was. It felt like a real world, and then they did great characters and great writing and great dialogue, and everything was just good. And then they made Andromeda, and fuck, <laughs> fuck. And now here we are. Bioware's dead, on death's door, one foot in the grave. A lot of it is because of Anthem. I bet you they put so much fucking resources into that oh, game. Oh, dude, Anthem. But and you know, it fucking you know what? Burying them, bro. In this fucking release at the bottom. Great news, guys. We moved into a new space. And you look at this space, dude. They can't be hurting that much or they got money from somewhere because this office. So it's like, hey, I know we've been putting out nothing but dog shit for the last while, but it's paying. We got this nice new office. And we've got games that we can't tell you about right now. 
but we're also developing ga for games that you don't care about right now. So, Bioware. See you in two years. We're neck deep in sexual assault cases. We'll see you in a while. <laughs> Just a hot fucking dumpster fire mess. Um, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, oh, NBA 2K20. Holy shit. So basically, this is this isn't really a, a basketball game, Jeb. What Two K did was they looked at they. Okay, you know how you normally everyone has at least one friend that can't read a room mm -hmm. to save their life. Yep. They walk into a room. Yeah. They look around. Yeah. And then they say some shit that nobody should be saying because the room is just not calling for it. Mm. Everyone's got at least one friend that is like not they're like Ray Charles of the uh, of the can't read a room. That's 2K. Yep. 2K walked into a room full of screaming people about loot boxes and the government coming after comp uh, video game companies for loot box and predatory practices. And uh, and the general state of uh, of all of this like in game paid for bullshit in 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 general. And they said, "Hey guys, we're gonna do all of this as much as humanly possible within the confines of a basketball game to the point where this is more of like a like a a, a casino that we just so happen to have a basketball arcade game that we've shoehorned into the back of that if you feel like playing this basketball game, it's there." But what we really want you to do is gamble for like 10 hours straight a day, every day. Of course, because that's how you make money, bro. Dude, it's it's gotten to the point, man. And I've actually seen some really negative reviews uh, on NBA. Uh, dude, Steam for yeah. NBA 2K20 I've seen right now? Some, dude, I've been... I've been it's, it's bad. Dude, it's getting fucking demolished. <laughs> and it's, it's not getting review bombed for like the usual fuckery. This is actually... not Okay, so not only is it this... People review bomb bombing it because it's literally the same game as last year. Yeah, where they just they just they didn't they didn't change anything in the sense where they've improved anything or, or or whatnot. They've actually made a lot of shit worse, and then just kind of re rejigged how some things looked like in terms of UI, so it looks like they put work in to change the systems, but in mm -hmm. reality, the back is the same shit. Uh, in some cases, just castrated. But they this game is so much a copy and paste mm. that on the PC when somebody alt tabs. The icon in the taskbar says 2K19. Don't. Yeah, bro. Oh, Fucking. Oh, bro. That's how copy paste this oh, game bro, is. Oh, that's. You guys got to slow down. And then they put in, like, just nothing but casino shit. And just in game. Spend some money. Oh, bro. You go to that Steam page, and the first thing you see when you scroll down is VR bucks. Bro, I'm just going to say it, man. These, this is getting ridiculous. It's getting, it's getting ridiculous, you know? I, I, it's getting ridiculous, bro. It's gotten to the point now where games are so desperate to to milk its consumer yeah. for money in yeah. any... like. You know, it's no longer the eighty dollars you pay for the game is enough. No, it's no longer the skins and a different color basketballs or whatever the fuck you got going on there, or random crates and different fucking shitty things that get going on in these sports games. Mm. Now they're literally putting in casinos mm -hmm. in these games, yeah, like legit casinos. Actual casinos. They are getting or programming your kids and your brain to buy these bucks to gamble in a fucking sports game yes uh, i just like if you just even think about it for a second like yes. like like you when when do you buy a sport like this isn't like it, it's so far from what you're actually buying like it's, yes. it's actually you're on a different like level i mean one thing if for example, Grand Theft Auto, where yes. there's an actual casino within Grand Theft Auto, and it's a city. You can you can, you can kind of kinda, justify. You, yeah, you can. Still you, pretty you, fucked yeah, up. Yeah, it's still fucked up. But you, you know, come on. You can. It's Grand Theft Auto. It's Grand Theft. There's a casino. Okay, that you can let it slide. Yeah. A basketball game. 
a basketball game where, where you, you can play as LeBron James one minute and then the next you're gambling real life dollars in a casino? Are you that desperate to make some extra money? <laughs> Dude, when they're spending more time developing Casinos. casino games in your sports game than they are developing the sports ver like aspect of the sports game you've got 2019 on your fucking banner but yet you've got a perfectly functioning casino stop the madness <laughs> it's fucking crazy oh my god like why yeah, the game. The game is like like a psychologist brought up. This game is still it got past the uh, the uh, ERSB or the ESRB. I can't remember. It's ES ESRB. Anyway, the rating uh, it's it's still rated for kids. It's not for kids. It's not you have for a, kids. You have a, you literally somebody's programmed a casino in the fucking game. Yes, you're gambling. Yeah, you're gambling in your basketball game. Not only has two K basketball games been dog shit for a long time. They can't. They don't even have the fucking nutsack to spend time developing the proper basketball portion of the game anymore. Which again, I'm gonna. I can't stress to you enough. Has been dog shit for a long time. And then you're gonna put a bunch of developmental effort into a thousand and one ways to turn it into a casino game on the down low. And then you can't even go out of your way. To QA your game for the fucking taskbar icon to be changed because you copy pasted so hard. It's a, that's embarrassing, dude. That is it's embarrassing. Embar it's just embarrassing. Bro. I wouldn't want my name on that game. It's embarrassing. If that's I worked on it, I'd bro. say, you know what? I'm gonna take the L on this one. Dude, the fucking NBA players, dude, like they honest to God, they should be the ones that are that are tweeting out and going, dude, I don't want my name part of this. Yeah. This is crazy. My very fans that look up to me, I'm in a game. They're buying the game because they love they love me. Yeah. They want to play. They want to play the game. They want to look up to me. But before they do, there's roadblocks there for them to gamble their money away before they can actually play a sport. Because you know, playing sports is supposed to be fun. You know, it's supposed to get you out. It's supposed to it's supposed you know, to be about sports. It's supposed to be about sports. Yes, not gambling. At a casino or whatever other spins or whatever the fuck they got going on in there. It's it's embarrassing, man. Stop. It's embarrassing, dude. Stop the madness. Stop it, for God's sake. So yeah, they uh, they could not have released that at a worse time. Where like every developer that has anything that even remotely resembles a loot box or a gambling mechanic, they walked in and they sprinkled their game. They didn't just sprinkle it. They went. They went. They went to. You know, like you're at a restaurant and you go to put some salt on, and then the salt shaker top comes off, and you just get the entire jar. It's a lot of salt. That's what they did. Whoops. There. Let me just. Well seasoned. It was actually more like. <laughs> they banged a rail of that salt when it dumped on the table. Ay ay ay. Uh, Death Stranding. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet because uh, I was waiting for it yesterday, and I just it just never came up. But. It, uh, Hideo Kojima himself put together and edited in 4K a 49 minute long gameplay demo and trailer for Death Stranding to show you with minimal to no spoilers the gameplay loop because everyone is so fucking lost as to what Death Stranding is about. So we actually, there is, right now you can go watch this if you haven't already. If you really want to know, uh, and I might watch some of it myself later on, 49 minutes of Death Stranding gameplay in 4K. So he released a small movie. A very Yeah, well, I mean, think about who this is. It's Hideo Kojima. Do you remember what Metal Gear Solid was like? I do. It was 90% cutscene. It wasn't a small movie. No, it was a big movie. It was like a 20-hour movie. It just never stopped. Um, so that's available. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I've seen some reactions to it. Uh, mostly positive. Still a lot of confusion. People still going, what the fuck? Uh, some people going, eh? Uh, where they're a little bit more indifferent uh, about the game now. It does show some combat in spots. It does show some characters and some character interactions. Um, this whole bag and shit that he's got on his back is just so... It's so in the way. Like, it feels like it's a I think quarter of the screen. I think that's what... like. Uh, I think that, that backpack he's got is actually pretty substantial. Like, how much... Like, they're... they're 
it shows him like you choosing how much is going on to the backpack and spots and yeah. stuff. I think so. I think it's actually mechanically speaking a pretty substantial part of the game. Um, yeah, it looks like it. It looks like you can use it as all kinds of different things. But I stand by what I said before. This is a game that I'd probably rather watch somebody play. Yeah. Than play it myself. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a game that I'm going to be excited about to play for its gameplay. Yeah. At best, it's probably going to be because it's Hideo Kojima and he's and he is a very intelligent guy and he's a great artist. There's, you know, I'm going to want to watch all the cutscenes stitched together <laughs> with some of the gameplay to make the you know, to give me some context. Man, I'm watching it now. It looks okay. Yeah. It looks weird. It looks different. Graphically impressive because oh, yeah. again, it's on that. Uh, it's on the uh, <coughs> Gorilla Games. Uh, engine that d did Horizon Zero Dawn. It's a great graphics engine. Looks fantastic. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's a video game, Jeff. It's a Hideo Kojima video game. Yep. Um, sure. Funny, uh, fun enough because he has endless friends in uh, the movie business. Keanu Reeves stopped by his studio not long ago. Of course he did. There's a bunch of selfies with Hideo Kojima and Why not? Keanu Reeves. He was there. It's the 25th anniversary of The Matrix this year and uh so you know Keanu was making his rounds seeing some friends doing some press pretty sure they're gonna start filming the next matrix next year bro i'm still trying to wrap my head around that shit wrap it <laughs> it's just crazy uh fallout 76 is back on the menu boys this time oh my god they're releasing fresh hot off the presses a refrigerator as well as two little, like, robot things that go and collect, you know, small items for you automatically. In a pack for 15 US dollars, the fridge slows down the decay of food. And you can actually get this now only as a bundle, either with real money or grind the fuck out of in-game currency. Nope. Which means that refrigerator, Jeff, costs more than $7 nope. as an in-game item. Nope. When they said that the game was only going to have cosmetic items. Oops. Nope. You know what they did when they priced it? They made it, I think it's 1100 of the in-game currency, which when you go to buy currency is conveniently, you have to go a 10 spot and a 5 spot for the $15. Of course they did. Then you have a little bit of a balance. You a little balance. So then you're forced to re-up a little bit more if you want to just get rid of them. They're just you playing the math game. Fucking pricks. For a fucking refrigerator. That's a hard pass. People are buying it too, bro. Of course they're buying it, bro. So they're probably buying multiple fridges. Got one for upstairs and downstairs. Just fucking crazy to me, bro. Todd Howard fucking... He's no longer the God Howard, bro. No. I say that ironically now. Like, it used to be like... It used to he be... He is the God. Now he was it's... the God. Now it's... Now it's... God Howard. God Howard in quotation marks. What a fucking prick. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's what he is. He's just a lying yes, prick now. Yes, he's a now. sack of shit, bro. He's a sack of shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know him personally. No, but I business mean, practices, he's a fucking prick. I'm just going to call him a sack of shit because what he's doing with his franchise and, his, and his entire company. It's bad. Fuck you. Yeah, it's bad. Fuck you. You're ruining everything that, you get, that everybody loves. Thank you. Speaking of ruining everything that I love, Amaranth... <laughs> Good <That> segue. <laughs> uh, got uh, got banned again, Jeff. Did you see this? No. All right. Well, let me uh, let me inform you. Uh, Amaranth uh, doing Amaranth things uh, earlier this week, and by earlier this week, I mean I think less than seventy two hours ago. Uh, was you know on the ground doing I don't know what the fuck she was doing. To be honest with you, she's in that like weird fucking nondescript room doing whatever the fuck and just dance rolling i don't know if it was a just dance i think it was just her rolling around the ground with her dog it might have been an asmr section i think where she was then trying to get the dog to get close to the microphone to like asmr was to like scratch the dog or some shit okay and she like sits up she's like rolling around the ground she sits up at one point and she starts like sliding around trying to get the dog to come over and uh and you just you, you all of a sudden, Amaranth No No Square is just front and center for like a non uh, for a non insignificant amount of time, apparently, and 
of course, the question became, well, is she going to get banned? She did. Oh. For, I think, less than 48 hours. Hey. Because I, when I wrote this yesterday, when I was filling this out on stream, and we were checking in, uh, she was still banned. And uh, so I had originally in the notes, in you know, indefinite amount of, we, we don't know how long the ban's going to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then, not even before the night was over, I was over at M's, and uh, I was... Um, Oh, you know what? I was showing her, uh, she was asking about Twitch and stuff, and I was explaining, I was explaining, uh, some Twitch stuff to her, and I, I, no joke, I was talking about the struggle of, like, telling people what we do for a living, and then they go to Twitch, and they see this kind of shit, mm -hmm. and then, no joke, I go in, uh, I was like, well, uh, I was saying, you know, some people just, you know, do just chatting, they talk, whatever, they do whatever, and, like, the third stream on the list was Amaranth, and I was like, Hold up now. She's back. She's back already? It, doesn't sh it shouldn't surprise you, bro. Excuse me? It shouldn't surprise you, bro. It's um, a meme, bro. It's a meme. It's one that you just have to accept. Everyone... Get your hustle on, girl. ...was so fucking... Get your hustle on. ...excited that Twitch grew a set of fucking balls. I didn't even see anything on Twitter or nothing, so to, I must be out of... To, uh, yeah, to ban it. Like, Reddit was on fire over... Oh, it. Everyone well, fuck, was Reddit like, will be on fire, but... Everyone was like, thank God, finally, somebody high profile getting banned appropriately for what's going on. And, uh, like, 48 hours. Not even. What can you do, bro? She's back. Literally... Dude, a, a guy got almost perma-ban because somebody thought he almost said the N-word. Yeah. This girl has broken the TOS as hard as humanly possible multiple times now and still can't get a ban for longer than 48 hours. Hey. At this point, it's, it's like beating a dead horse, bro. It's just the way it is at this point. All you have to do is just sit back and just watch the show and just stay in your lane and just run it. That's all you... Bro, what, what am I supposed to say? Do I get angry about it? Do I bitch and cry and complain about it? Do I lash out about it? Because it doesn't do anything. In fact, probably only makes things worse. You're probably more likely to get in trouble about talking about it yes. than actually doing it. Oh, dude, does that piss me I off? I know, but you know what? Once again, all you can do is accept it, sit back and watch, and just hope and pray that a day comes where somebody wakes up and says, no more. And just... Wake up out of a fat coma? I don't like, know. What? Wake up from whatever fucky fog that is going on right now and say, you know what? This is no more. Today is the day it changes. <laughs> Till then, bro, strap yourself in. Go on. Going on a journey. Oh my lord! That's pretty mercy. much. That's pretty oh, much the soul. way. That's just the way. That's just the way it is. That's just, just the way it is. It's just. Oh well, yeah. It's just it's fucking crazy. I mean, it's 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 a similar situation with a, a lot of people. I, I'm just. I know. I, but you I know what, really, bro? At this point, you just can't let it rent space in your head. You just got to move. You just got to say, uh, you know what? It rent space in my head just long enough for I, like these I know. podcasts. I know. But I, when I talk about it, I know, it'll be they, gone. I know. I know. But, but during the time we talk about it. It's rough. I just, I want to look at some Twitch employees I know. and go, what? Get the fucking avocado ass toast out of your goddamn mouth for five seconds. I know. And your hand off your dick and the bubble tea off your desk. <laughs> to just fucking use the TOS appropriately for five seconds. There are some cases that are going to be hard. This is not one of them. Mm -hmm. This is not a difficult case. Mm -hmm. Just like Alinity yeeting a cat. That's the way she or goes. Or feeding it vodka. That's the way. That's an easy one. This is the world we live in. It's an easy, it's a T-ball. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes you strike out at T-ball. <laughs> but here's the thing. The unathleticism at play there. They still let you run. Go, Johnny. <laughs> go to first base. You can make it. <laughs> go, Johnny. Run. <laughs> they do in California, anyway. Safe. Yeah, up here, you know what I tell the kids when, we were, when I was in charge? You missed the ball? You fucking suck. 
<laughs> Strike out, bitch. Strike out. Go sit down. <laughs> next, next, next? Ver- next person's turn. You know why? Because you're going to get up in the real world and somebody's uh, going to go, hey, you suck. Uh, and you're going to have to stop and look at yourself and go, you know what? I do. Yes. And that's okay. That's okay. I can fix that. I can get better. I can get better. Mm-hmm. But if it's just everyone is just getting a fucking like freebie. Yeah, but those everyone's got thousands and thousands of subs, bro. I got bringing in big, bringing in big business. It's big business. It's business, brother. Oh, That's the world we live in. Fucking hell. Uh, Mr. Black. Yep. It's time to sell out. Is it time? It's time to sell out. Oh, my goodness. Hit ladies me up. That's sell out. Ladies and gentlemen, if y'all are enjoying the podcast, which I know you do, because you wouldn't be here if you didn't, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash lag TV and uh, go throw money at the screen. We're trying to get back to 2500 We're I pretty mean, we're uh, pretty much there. Ideally, actually send us money because they could throw money at the screen. Yes. It's oh, not go, it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean virtually put like virtually Vir- y- yes. whatever you do on your end, do it. Ideally. Oh. Adam shipped out all the products. Everyone, I, well, there's probably some that came in after we did all these current labels. Okay, uh, but there would only be a couple, like maybe three. Okay, uh, uh, more recent ones. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I literally sat in that post office. Yes, I walked in the door. I had a bo- I had the whole box I brought in, and I said, "Bro, I know you text me. I, yeah, this I, I guy said hates the guys, me right now, bro. bro. <laughs> buckle the fuck up." Yep. So there it is. Some of you guys that are watching right now probably already got some of your packages. It's uh, very possible. It's possible. Can I just tell you something amazing about postage in Canada? It costs $16 to send one of those tubes to Vancouver. I'm going to say that one more time. $16 to send that bo- uh, that uh, the, the There isn't tube even $16 to worth of shit in there, bro. I'm uh, not even close. You know what it costs to ship it to Kentville? About an hour from here? Can you even... Bro, if it was $6 more, I would have driven. It would have saved me money. <laughs> it's approaching that. Jesus. Hand delivered. I don't even want to know what the total was for that. I don't even want to know. Uh, 600 bucks. <laughs> Just shy. It was 580. Patreon.com <laughs> slash leg TV. <laughs> um, all your stuff is sent. Uh, so check your mailboxes. You want to know how much it costs to ship to California? How much? Eight bucks. That doesn't even make no sense. It's the same side of the continent in a different country. <laughs> Half the cost. <laughs> okay. Um, what other sellouts do we have? Oh, that's right. Yeah, what do you mean what other sellouts? We're sponsored. We're sponsored. It's right above We're your sponsored, head. guys. I don't know if you see this banner here. If you guys are watching this or listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're... Guys, if you're looking for a VPN service... Virtual private network. Mm. Nord VPN. That's the one. Is is the actual show. It's the Catalina wine mixer. The best VPN service you can buy. Thunderdome. Right now. And guess what? For a limited time. And I'm telling you guys, it's going to be limited because in the next couple of weeks, it's probably going to be a different deal available. That's right. But you can get 75% off. Mm. 75% off. Mm. $2.99 a month oh. on a three-year contract. That's how much it cost us to ship something to Taiwan. This here probably cost $2.30. Pretty close. For one coffee. That's right. We're talking if you're at Starbucks. It's not even that good coffee. No, it's garbage. But if you're at Starbucks, <laughs> it's like 6 bucks. It's going to cost you two ninety nine a month for the NordVPN service. That's right. Uh, you, get, you have the option between 5,100 servers in 60 countries. It's a lot. No data logging. Zero. You can use NordVPN on your extension for Chrome. Mm. It's lightweight and user-friendly from the first click. That's right. And it secures your browsing in seconds. So secure. You can also get the desktop app or your app on your phone. I use it on both. Hell yeah. How many devices can we use one account on at once? Six simultaneous. Count them. Six. Six. Your iPad, your iPhone, your wife's iPhone, your boyfriend's iPhone. Because you swing both ways and you, you just got both. Side your, bitch. Your kid's iPad. Yeah. Your computer. A laptop. And the list just goes on and on and on. There's an automatic kill switch. That's right. It even works in China. China. Compatible with 
most operating system, including Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. Peer-to-peer sharing allowed. Mm. Double data encryption for increased anonymity. Let's go. Unlimited bandwidth. Dedicated IPs available on request. Free security extras. <sighs> Risk-free for 30 days. You try it out for 30 days. If, you, if it isn't stroking what it needs to stroke for you, get your money back. That's right. NordVPN. Promo code OTT. Do it. OTT. Link is in the description below. Click on it. Uh, if you're live here on this Twitch chat, I will post a link uh, in this chat for you. Oh, it's already there. It's already happening. Promo code OTT, 75% off. Big thank you to Nord. We finally yes. got a sponsor. So honestly, guys, if you are looking for a VPN service or you already use one and you're looking to switch mm. or you want a better version because right. this is the best, you can upgrade. I've been upgrade. using it for years. He's been using it for years. I just started when they started sponsoring me, but Adam's been using it. Long before the sponsorship. That's right. NordVPN, promo code OTT. You want thighs like there mine? NordVPN. Bam. Bam. i am be honest with you, you probably don't want thighs like mine. But get it anyway. Do it. The benefits outweigh the negatives. Movies and TV. Jeff, have you ever sat down and thought to yourself, hey, I could use a remake of Face Off. Nope. Well, good news. There's a remake of Face Off coming. No, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it, bro. I've heard I heard this like two days ago, and I just that was actually what I, I said. No. But wait, what if I spice it up a bit? Spice it. What if I told you that Paramount hired the screenwriter for Twenty Two Jump Street to do the remake of Face Off? It's a still a, it's still a hard no. <laughs> as fun as the Jump Street movies can be. But is that really the guy that you want to be writing Face Off? No. I don't want anybody writing Face Off. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real, bro. Well, that's, that's, that's what I was going to say. That's Nicolas Cage and John Travolta classic that yeah. just needs to stay a classic. I don't want to reboot. I don't want to remake. I don't want to re-anything. You know what? If you're going to give me anything, just remaster it. That's the plan. That's it. Just you remaster that. it. And you know what? They probably will before this one gets released. Oh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. They'll probably do that. And you should probably stick to just watching that remaster. Yes. It's probably the way to go. It's a hard pass. Uh, I agree. I haven't even seen the original yet, which is weird because I've seen a lot of Nicolas Cage movies. Mm. Uh, and that's like one of his best. Uh, and, and so it's kind of odd that I haven't seen it yet. But um, even then, I looked at it and went, nope. Because it's not going to be Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. It's going to be two people we give zero fucks about. Do you and think they're gonna pull nobodies for this one? No, it's they gonna, gonna there's gonna use... be people that you know. Okay, it'll probably be like a like a fucking Jason Statham in The Rock. Oh, it'll it'll be some oh, bro. Oh, it, no. It's gonna be I. It's gonna be somebody that relatively known, like like fairly well known. Channing Tatum. It's very possible, especially with the twenty two jump what street. I'm saying, could be it. Channing I, Tatum. Hey, you know what though? I think that might that might be decent might casting. Be one of them. That might be decent casting. Right. <laughs> I don't know who the other guy is. He's probably going to be black. It's 2019. I think so. He's probably going to be black. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Idris Elba, opposite of Channing, Channing Tatum. Tatum. Bro. <laughs> what? what? Keanu Reeves. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Keanu Reeves. I can see that's it. That's it. I can see it, bro. Now I want it. Now I can see it, bro. Now I want now I can see it, bro. I can. See, can't you picture Keanu Reeves being one of these dudes? Denzel Washington. Oh my God! And Keanu Reeves together. I, Denzel dude, Washington I, I and Keanu even, Reeves. My brain. No, nah, my brain couldn't even handle that. I. Denzel's just too. He's just too good of an actor. I. I just. I couldn't. My. I'd watch it. I really think, honest to God, Keanu Reeves. He could. He could. He could make anything you don't want to see into and something you that see you want to see it. Absolutely. Fucking loot And it's that type of movie, too, where you could picture him doing this. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I'm in. There's your casting. Keanu Reeves, Denzel Washington, Face Off, Remade. Make it happen. We, you know we're not getting that, though. It's going to be some no. fucking nobodies that just... 
Uh, I, no, I think I think you're gonna. We're get, not nobody. Yeah, people. We somebody don't. said Ryan Reynolds. I think you could, it could be somebody like a Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, could, yeah. It could be somebody like a Keanu Reeves. Um, or they might just totally fuck with us and put two females in there. Ooh, you know what? That's probably not a bad call. I bet you that might be it. It's very possible. Which means automatically you're going to get that uh, unfunny fat chick. What's her name? Melissa McCarthy. That's it. And uh, you'll probably get that Asian chick that's like the buzz right now. The the uh, the girl that was in um um she's in a lot. She's actually really funny too. She's actually a good actress. Um, I forget her name, but she's in the um the that Asian movie uh, Crazy Rich Asians? Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Uh, no, no. You yet. should. It's good. Yeah, I think yeah, you and I've your heard, lady would watch I've, it. I've heard, uh, would enjoy. I've heard, it. Uh, I've heard it's quite good. Um. Oh, speaking of that. Hmm. Um, Aren't they doing a follow-up movie? They today? are. They're doing Crazy Rich Asian too. Now listen to this. Okay. The writers mm. of Crazy Rich Asians. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the first one was a guy and a girl. Coincidentally, are they Crazy Rich Asians? Uh, I actually think I, I know one of them. Before, I know they one might of, be. Now. I know one of them's Asian. Okay. Uh, they both might be. Okay. Um, I should probably know this, but I don't. So anyway, the dude got offered eight hundred thousand to a million dollars to co-write the second one. It's not a bad payday. It's not a bad payday. The chick, mm-hmm. hundred thousand. Excuse me. The chick, a hundred thousand. And people were like, "Wait," she was like, "Whoa, hold up the fun bus here." Uh, we just wrote one of the biggest uh, successes uh, of of the entire uh, production company in recent years, and you just offered him. Now their thing was, well. He has bigger credits. That's a lie. This dude has written like two movies in the last like fucking decade plus, and his most notable was the proposal. Uh, coincidentally, with Ryan Reynolds, which wasn't a bad movie, but that was like way back in fucking early two thousands or some shit. Um, this chick has written like twenty different TV shows. Uh, is much more active, and the dude who got offered eight hundred thousand said. Hold my hold my purse here. What I'll do mm. is this isn't fair. Mm-hmm. So what I'm willing to do is I'm mm-hmm. willing to split the difference. Mm-hmm. You can take half my pay, mm-hmm. pay her half, pay me half, and I'm good. The girl said, nope, that's not your responsibility. I mm. appreciate what you're doing, mm. but I'm walking. She's gone. Good call. Yep. And it's a big, bro, it's a big fuck show right now. because some bull Some shit. huge bullshit, bro. And it's all because of one factor. She's a woman. Yeah. That's it. She's a woman. Yeah. Some bullshit, bro. 800 paint boat eight dude, times. Dude, there's there's a line between like, you know, $50,000 difference and a an $700,000. And it difference. would also be a difference if you've got like say fucking Quentin Tarantino wrote the script, right? Or it was a like co-writing. Then you go, yeah. "Okay, listen. The name itself has brings weight. has weight brings yes. a lot more economic value. So these were the two that wrote the original. Yes, they co-wrote it together, just them two. And the movie was a massive success. And so, so they hire them back for the second one. And the proposal was eight hundred and a, between eight hundred and a million for the dude, a hundred thousand for the woman. Fucking no! It's a hard pass. Fucking no! If I was a dude, I would also walk. Yes, because they wrote it together. Yes. And it's not going to be the same. If she walks, I'm, walk, I'm walking too. Yep. And you know. And so they they came out uh, the the uh, the um, um, production company. Which production came, company is this? It's, uh, let me see here. Crazy Rich Asians. Um, I'll find out right here, right now. Probably should have had all these notes, but I just wasn't expecting. Oh, well, I no, didn't it's... remember to talk about it until I talked about the the Asian chick from uh, Warner Brothers. So Warner Brothers comes out, right? Mm. And they say, "Yeah, you know what? It's just uh, it's what we always do. It, it it goes by. There's like a code, and it just goes by uh, who's got more experience and stuff like that. And who's got a bigger penis? That's it. <laughs> Coincidentally, he does by default. Yes, he does. Yeah, I know he's Asian, but still bigger. There's still a penis there." It's crazy rich Asian penis now. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> so, so I don't. I, you know, it's 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 insane. Like, uh, let me see here. Crazy rich. Um. So if I look at 
did this movie made two hundred and thirty eight point five million dollars at the box office. All right, that's just the box office. How that's much was it? Two hundred and thirty eight million. Holy shit! At the box office, the fucking movie cost a whopping ten mil. No, it was a, it was a thirty million dollar okay. movie. That's still that is crazy low. The profits on this fucking movie huge in. Same. Huge. This isn't. This isn't. This is box office. This is not DVD, Blu-ray, no, streaming. Just box just office. box office on a thirty million dollar movie with basically relatively unknown actors and actresses. You just made a fuck ton of money, and you're going to come back to the co-writer, yes. the person who literally and the script is actually quite clever and it's well done. I saw yeah. it twice in theaters, and I don't go to the movies often to see a movie twice. Saw it by myself, liked it so much. Said Kayla, we got to go see it together. Went and saw it together. The movie's so well. It's it's a bit you know it's a bit formulaic and stuff, but it's it's a it's a good formulaic can be fine. It's fine, and yeah. it's it's one of those things where it's almost got the Avatar effect where you you get so into this world yeah, uh, yeah. that you almost want to be part of it, and, yeah, you, and yeah. you're like you, you, it's, you too want to be a crazy rich Asian exactly. Yeah, and so it's well done. The movie makes so much goddamn money. Mm-hmm. That when you're coming to get the same writers to, to create this magic again for you, you pay them a you lot of money. You pay them a fuck ton of money. Yes. Not even just eight hundred thousand. No. You pay them like you pay them what they deserve. Yeah. You realize that you've just made a couple hundred million dollars in profit by the time this is all said and done. Pay they your be motherfuckers like five mil a piece. Pay your motherfuckers some serious coin. Yes. Or at the very least, pay them a couple million dollars a pop and sign them to to write pictures. For the next couple of movies or whatever uh, brainchild they come up with, and yes. guarantee them work. Yes. For the next God knows how you lock these motherfuckers in. Yes. Now she's gonna leave. He's probably gonna leave with her, and and somebody like Netflix or somebody's gonna pick, gonna pick these motherfuckers up. up. They're gonna pay them what they deserve, and you're gonna lose writers. And then when the second movie comes out and it's not as good or it's not as critically acclaimed, people are gonna jump back onto this bullshit, and they're gonna go, "Look, you're the reason why." The, the movie quality wasn't where it was last time because you dicked a female for being a female. Pay them what they deserve, God damn it! It's pulling like a reverse Kathleen Kennedy. Straight up. Where it's like, well, I'm going to take all these really good directors and I'm going to fire them and replace them with really shitty directors. And then those directors that I fired go on to make Oscar-winning movies. Yes. And then the ones that I chose can barely write their way out of a wet paper bag. Yes. So I, when I heard that shit, I was like, "This is fucking. Me- this is mental. You're gonna yes. pay this guy seven, eight times more, and she's produced way more shit in the last fucking decade than this guy did by a substantial margin. <laughs> and then you've got that's, the same dude that's, that's going, so bro. Stupid. This ain't fair. But I'm willing to lose half a million dollars so that we can work together on this project again because it's not fair. I'm willing to give her my pay. That's just Dude, embarrassing. It's it sad. Is, it's, emba- it's embarrassing, and it shouldn't happen. And I honestly don't think it happens as often as it used to. I, st- I think this is probably far more uncommon now than it, than it has been in the past because of what's happening now. This information's yeah. out. It comes public. It's going to look bad as fuck. Yeah, this woman came on. Sorry, guys. I'm not writing this shit. I'm getting fucked here. It's not going to look good. I'm getting fucked royally. My co-writer, who does the same amount of work as me, is getting paid yes. seven, eight times more. Yes, for being a dude. We co-wrote the movie. I didn't show up and fucking write my name at the bottom of the script and walk away. It's We're crazy. a team. It's crazy. Yep. So Speaking anyway. Of Kathleen Kennedy. What now? I just wanted to sprinkle it in here because anytime I can get a jab in at Ryan Johnson for being a fucking cuck, I'm going to do it. I watched a video of him literally trying to explain away how bad his Star Wars movie was by saying that Return of the Jedi is a bad movie that disappointed him when he saw it. I want you to let that fucking sink in. Did he say that? He said those words, that that it disappointed him, and he tried to frame a lot of Star Wars' problems around the writing and delivery of the return of the Jedi. Or the Empire Strikes Back. The second one is Empire Strikes Back, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's the second one. So he tried to fuck with it and be like yeah I was disappointed not as disappointed as we are with episode 8 I'll tell you that much when you go back and you start trying to harp on arguably bordering on objectively the best Star Wars movie 
in the originals and you're comparing it to your dog food at a five-star restaurant delivery of your Star Wars movie, you've lost the fucking net. You are so hell-bent on trying to look like you, you were just given a bad rap and that's why your movie is shit. No, Ryan Johnson. You are just a dog shit director. He said, I was distinctly, I distinctively remember being disappointed by The Empire Strikes Back. He was eight. Such a genius mind at eight. He just knew, he just had the, he had the taste right. You know what? Fuck off. Just fuck off. I don't want to see any, anytime I see or see or hear him speak now, I get angry. I get angry. And it makes it worse because somebody's giving him work. And so, it may, like, so, like, he has... Well, if he made a movie as good as The Empire Strikes Back, he'd be God. Yes, he would be he God. He would actually... He'd be an actual God amongst the men. The Star Wars fans would suck his dick six ways from Sunday. But instead, he Ryan johnson did, Which is arguably the... Probably the second or third worst Star Wars movie... I think the only one's worse ever Solo. made. No, I, I enjoyed Solo way more than this. I, I did. I enjoyed it more, but I think from a technical standpoint, bro, it was, the Phantom, Solo the was Phantom worse. Menace is better than Eight. Yes, it is. Uh, the every prequel is better than Eight. I wasn't a huge fan of the. Of, Neither was I. But if I go back and watch them now, see, this is what the new Star Wars films have done for me. I go back and watch the prequels, and I go, you know what? These are bad. But I can poke less holes in these than I can poke in the new movies. Yeah. Like the old, the prequels, it's it's shoddy writing and and line delivery from people that really shouldn't be delivering lines poorly. But I mean, what are people's biggest gripes with the prequels? Midichlorians and Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. And and they and they and they make fun of Hayden Christensen's ability to not display more than like one emotion, which if you think about it, I guess technically you can make an argument that that's how the character was like George was trying to get him to play it that way because that's how he envisioned Vader. But yeah, I suppose that's Listen, it. And I, then you go, but then go and look at the, there is, there is a pantheon of, of, uh, of <clears throat> people creating an almost inconceivable library worth of the endless shit of these new Star Wars movies. And the just the list of shit just goes on. It never it never ends. Like there's like the positives on these movies are like yeah, <laughs> four I, lines. I would say I would say 8 is probably the second worst Star Wars movie. So what's the worst? Uh the the last uh the last prequel. The last prequel. Yeah. Uh, which is the uh, fuck I don't even remember the name of it. Star Star Wars uh I don't remember it either. Fuck, man. That's how much I hate. That's I how just know them as the, the prequels. prequels. Yeah. The third one. Uh, it's between the second and the third one. Um, Return. Uh, I keep re I keep thinking uh, Return of the King, but it's not. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge. Revenge of the Sith. There you go. Hot garbage, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It's fucking hot. Hot garbage. I. You know what? It's. It's. Eight, eight is either the second or the third worst Star Wars movie of, of all time. And honestly, I'd much rather watch any of the prequels, like to rewatch, than watch eight. I'll probably you, never see eight again you in know my what, life. You know why I think Unless eight I is watch the, it with my boy later. You know why I think eight is the worst? Is because there was less of a reason for eight to be bad than the prequels. Yeah. Eight included the original cast. They had a free, they had a get out of jail free card. They had a free lunch. They have, it was like it was pizza day at school mm. and your ass had a free pizza ticket. Mm. All you had to do was stand in line and you had to hand that over mm. and you got pizza mm. for zero dollars right. and zero cents. All right. Eight's the worst. It's the worst. It's the worst one. I'm trying to find, re it's the worst. It's terrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's never, it should have never happened. It's it terrible. It starts with a thrown fucking yeah, it's, lightsaber. Yeah, thank you. And it thank ends you. That's it. with a shoulder swipe. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. It's eight. eight Has anyone over. mashed up 
the song, you know, brush your shoulder off with Prob- him probably, doing that. It's probably happened. I just want like 15 hours of brush your shoulder yeah, off. Eight's worse. With him being forced, Mark fucking Hamill being forced to stand there in front of like seven billion dollars worth of fucking blue screen and go. Yeah, it's the worst. Stop. It's the worst. It's the worst. And I can tell you right now, Empire Strikes Back, one of the best Star Wars movies of all time. It's one of the best movies yeah. <laughs> of all time. <laughs> of all time. There you go. It's a, I mean, it's not like super high up there. No, but, but it's, we're talking like a, probably top 30. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Top 20. Yeah, yeah. I'd it's not a top it, 10. I, no, no. But it's a I'd top put, 20. I put it top 25. Yeah. Top, easy top 25. Of all time. Of all time. And, and, and this he guy was, coming in here going, you know what? At eight years old, disappointed me. And uh, it also set the tone for why you guys think my current movie, not all that good. Fuck yourself, dude. If you had the dick, you'd be able to. Ryan Johnson, at your 45 years old, Stop. you've disappointed me. You've disappointed me <laughs> greatly. This is, and this isn't like parental disappointment. This is like, man, I don't know how you get up in the morning and put your pants on. You know what else is disappointing? What's that? Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah, I saw this, yeah. Dave Chappelle's latest uh, special, Sticks and Stones, mm. uh, which, by the way, is hot fire. Have you seen it yet? Yeah, I saw it. Some funny shit. It's very good. It's funny, but more importantly, you know how I saw this special? You know the the uh, George Carlin special where, like, the seven, like, dirty words or whatever the fuck? It's the... the, um, the Classic George Carlin one where he, where he literally goes on television and he says every word that you're not allowed to say on television. And mm-hmm. the whole thing was like the absurdity of language and not like what what words are okay to say and where they're okay to say and when and why. And then this whole, okay. So it, this was like approaching that. Mm-hmm. But instead of words on TV now, it was more about... Um, it was more about, you know, cancel culture and the social justice warrior shit. And he, he hit on like a bunch of the... He even hit on abortion. Mm-hmm. He hit on almost every major hot button topic you could get your hands on, but he did it in a way that one only Dave Chappelle could get away with saying any of this shit. Yes, everyone else dies, literally, and their career, career first, and then they're killed. Yep, in that order. Yep. So maybe not. Maybe even the reverse order. They die first, their career goes with them. But he does it in that super smart way that makes you stop and think about the issue for a second you're laughing at what he how he just delivered it which he always delivers in the most fucking genius shit ever i think i think he is of our time he's he's the most intelligent and the best he's the best comedian we have oh and he, not even by a small margin no he's up, it's he, like everyone else is being comedian and then he's in like some other fucking yeah bro he's the godfather man he's, 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 the, he's, he's in another stratosphere yeah, yeah uh so he crushes this thing and ironically not even ironically i guess but in some way i suppose ron tomatoes comes out and says all right we're gonna do some weird shit we're not going to allow users to review this right away and on top of that we're not going to allow all the critics to do it we're only going to allow 15 really specific critics really white that are super white <laughs> and social justice warrior yeah. and will write for clickbait and will just and will and will just shit on this yeah because we don't like this because he's basically calling us out. Yep. So we want to try and stomp this, which is hilarious to me that they thought that even for a hot second that they had any hope of stamping out nah, Dave bro. Chappelle. Nah, bro. You nah. fucking wish you had the power nah. or the ability to have a bigger voice than Dave Chappelle. Nope. Not going to happen. Nope. And so what do they do? They come out and review it. They cry and they jerk off with their social justice warrior, fake social justice warrior tears. And they probably <laughs> spread that on their face to moisturize at night so they can try and remain youthful. And then they gave it zero percent. Yep. Zero. Yes. Percent. Which is fucking insane. Yep. And then they finally unlock user reviews. And what does it do? 99% currently on Rotten Tomatoes. 99. Get fucked. Get fucked. And when they opened it up to other... But this is the interesting thing. When they opened it up to other critics, not very many critics hopped on to review it. Of course not. And it only came up to like 27%. It's 30... I think it's 30-something Is it up to 30 now? Yeah. And it's because a bunch of people are too scared They're to go, afraid. you know what? 
this is some funny shit and it's some truth. He's speaking some fucking truth. Yep. But I can't say that because I'm going to lose my job or people are going to come after me and be like, man, 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 man. Yep. You know? I remember that time when he supported Dave Chappelle's fucking... Exactly. And, and what he said about this type of people or what he said about this person or what he said about that person. Dude, the shit's funny. Dave Chappelle's a comedian. He's a great comedian. Yes. He makes you think about the topics. Yes. It makes sense. Yes. Um, and, he, and he's not even... And he's he in his in his in his stand up he doesn't even dictate like he doesn't he just he puts it out there in a funny way and he never tells you how you should feel no he just says what's on his mind yes and then it's up to you to agree or not to agree and that's it or to even just get you to think about it and in a different light that's oh, how many people have gotten, have, have gone in for that ninety nine percent what's the the user uh, total. Um, I'll check here. Sticks and stones, the name of it. Uh, user reviews. You ready? <laughs> okay. All right. What are we at? So critics. Uh huh. Sixteen. Sixteen in total. That's the critics. It's a lot of them. Thirty-one percent. It's yikes. Audience score. Okay. 99%. Okay. All right. Almost 35,000 reviews. Oh, my God. For a comedy special. Yeah. This ain't, this ain't the Avengers. No. Yeah. How many did the Avengers get? Endgame, just for fun. Probably like hundreds of thousands. I have no idea what the user, how active the user base on Rotten Tomatoes is. Uh, there it is. Endgame, 64,000. So think about that. 91%. Think about that. 64, so double. 500 critics. 500 critics. 500, like, not just critics. These are like uh, Rotten Tomatoes approved critics. Yes, so like yeah, this is yeah. even more, like these are. It's more than that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's like 500 of those. Yes. Opposed to, and that got a 94%. Yeah. Opposed to the 16 that had the balls to say anything on this on this one. Yep. And a lot of the people that uh, was reviewing um, Dave Chappelle stuff are like YouTubers and shit. Like, oh, yeah. like critics that are just so big that they get a, a Rotten Tomato stamp. And then that's the show, because everybody's too bitch made to speak their mind dude, about how good dude, the shit is. Dude, it, it was perfect. It's perfect because the the special is literally a, a portion of that is specifically targeting this exact yes situation. Yeah, and you you know Dave knew. Oh yeah, that that was how it was going to go. Yeah, bro. It's fucking. He's playing. He's playing four D chess. Oh, you know what I'm excited about? Um, Eddie Murphy. Yes, he's, I mean, got, he's got some specials dude, coming. Dude, he's got, he's got a comedy specials coming. He's going on tour, mm. and he's got a, a Netflix movie coming out uh, that looks hilarious as fuck. Oh. Dude, it looks great. Mm. It's like him, fucking Wesley Snipes, uh, all the, all kinds of great like okay. uh, black actors and comedians. It, dude, okay. it looks great, man. Eddie Murphy's about to have a fucking resurgence. I'm there for Eddie Murphy. It's going to be the Eddie Murphy renaissance, Just bro. don't give me Flubber 3. You're not getting that. Just don't do it. Yeah. Eddie Murphy's got some shit coming. Um, what's the movie that that Robert Pattinson is in alongside of somebody that just came out? And it's like, uh, it definitely looks like it's an Oscar bait movie, but apparently it's really good. Um, oh, shit. Robert Pattinson. The ba we're going to call him Bad Bad Pattinson. Yeah, we, we, the bad we always say his name wrong. Pattinson, not Pat Patterson. Pat Pattinson, Patterson. The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse, and he's opposite somebody else with a big name. Yeah, I don't know. I never heard. It's Willem Dafoe. Ooh, Willem Dafoe. Nice. And Robert Pattinson in The Lighthouse. Nice. Dude, Rob Robert Pattinson can act, bro. And I think this is a movie that if you watched it, that's going to... It looks like one of those movies that's going to highlight that he can actually act. Yeah, and people are going to go, oh, shit. And I think a lot of people will see it because they're like, wait... Yeah. Does this get, let's see what this dude's all about. But yeah. I'll oh yeah, Flubber's Robin Williams. Yeah, I'm fucking. I'm I'm getting that confused with um, the Nutty Professor. Yeah, I like William Defoe. William Defoe is a fucking good actor. He is a good actor. 
Um, and so I might, I might actually want to see this at some point. Nice. It looks, uh, it looks pretty, it looks like the kind of Oscar-y movie that I would actually give a fuck about mm. because it doesn't look like they're trying to get an Oscar. It just so happens that it's it, like a good movie. It just look. It just so happens that it might actually get considered for, you know, uh, a, an Oscar. Uh, but yeah, I spot. I spotted that the other the other night as well. Well, uh, 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 what else? Nothing. Nothing. No. I thought there was something. Oh, I went to see. We went to go see um, Angel Has Fallen. So did you like it? Yes. It was even bad. Though, even though I hadn't seen the other movies, it didn't really matter. Oh, you didn't see the other ones. Okay. Uh, but it didn't really matter because they did a pretty good. They did a good enough, good enough job that I. You didn't need to see them. Nick Nolte, dude, fire, bro. I want to see him in some more shit too. Dude, he was great in that movie. He crushed it. Yeah. And you're right. He did. He did almost pull you out of the movie because he his, his acting was so much better than everyone else's. Yeah, yeah. He stole the scenes, bro. He there was like a, the there was like a fuck. couple of scenes where like there was some heart in it and stuff. Yes. And, and I was like, just, whoa, fuck. This is like okay. He's crushing. And it, it almost felt out of place because he was just given a fucking a hell of a performance. Oh, it was and everybody on. It was almost like the actors were just like in awe, like. You know, just like in a holy shit. Is this what acting is? Yeah, it's like holy shit. I'm this guy's transcending me right now. Uh, but very good. Yeah, it was great. Great popcorn movie. Uh, well done. Uh, and you know, Gerard Butler did his thing. It's Gerard Butler. He did his thing. Did the lady he did like it? Well, it? she likes Gerard oh, yeah, Butler. She liked, right? it. she liked it. She likes the Gerard Butler. She likes those movies. She watched the rest of them. And then I, when we went back, we ended up watching Geostorm, which is another <laughs> Gerard Butler uh, Butler movie. My uh, my vocal coach, or for my voiceover coach, yeah, yeah. he voice acts um, the um, he voice acts in, in Geostorm. Oh, really? But he's the he's the computer. Like when they're in the the big area with all the screens. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the the computer's talking to them about like shit that's going off in certain zones and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's the voice of the oh, of really? the whole oh, mainframe fun. thing. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. I thought you know what? Just like just like Angel it's the same Fallen, thing. Yeah, it's basically the same movie. Yeah, but again, entertaining enough. Strong Butler like, man, and and they. You know, they it, rare. It was rare. We, we've joked about it in the past how I, uh, you know, Adam always knows everything that happens in a movie. Mm-hmm. That movie of all the movies, you didn't see it coming. Went well. No, I saw it coming, but it took way longer than usual. Like mm. usually, it's like the first fucking twenty minutes. I'm mm. I'm there. That shit took me until damn near the reveal. Did you Did you watch I Did you watch it. that Hunter the uh, the Hunter one, the one that's on Netflix? Mm, the Hunter. It's called Hunter Killer. Oh no, I haven't. But uh, M has watched. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. the submarine one. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that also? Uh, it was more Gerard Butler, more but Gerard this Butler. time in a submarine. So it's basically. So he's he's basically Liam Neeson. He is absolutely. He's a better Liam Neeson, bro. Is, I'm he, just gonna just say he it, bro. doesn't need to do seventy. You know what? It, jump cuts for exactly. And you know what? Taken was great. Yeah. And then it got stupid, and it oh, got overplayed. Got old. It got old, and he got old. Uh, yeah. Uh, but Gerard Butler, he's still at that age now. It's like it's like if Gerard Butler made Taken in almost yes. every movie. Yeah. that he's in. It's yes. like it's very like it's either as good or just under like the level of Taken, it's and it's right good. There. It's right there. It's just good. It's like, well, you know, be honest. It's like decent sushi. Most of you know? most of Taken is that you know you just can't not like Liam Neeson. Yeah, he's a likable guy. Yeah, and then he's he's also a pretty good actor. Yeah, and 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 he's a good actor when he's like a family guy. Mm. Like he's because he looks and sounds like a bit of a family guy. He's got that hard edge, whatever the accent gives it to him. Uh, but let's be honest. Most of that movie was him delivering the line about having a particular set of skills, uh, right. a set of skills, which was one of the most hard ass fucking lines I've ever heard in a, in a Guys movie. Guys on the other end were shit themselves in my life. Oh, fucks. Calmly delivered that shit. I would just, I would have GG'd yep. on the other end. I said, "All right, you know what? Don't worry about it. Give me your address. I'm gonna be right yeah. over. Your family will be there in just a moment, <laughs> sir." <laughs> uh, and that was like most of that uh, that movie. But yeah. Uh, tech support. Tech support. Tech support. Let me pull that up real quick. What are people sending tickety, me? Tickety tickety tech tech support. Tech 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 the tech. Tickety tickety tech. Tickety tickety tech. Do I have? Where the hell is this at? Right now. There we go. Guy got it. I got it. So tech support, ladies and gentlemen. If uh, if you head on over to patreoncom slash TV, you too. At the ten dollar tier or higher, have the opportunity to answer uh, or ask us questions. Uh, I put a post up every single week called Tech Support, believe it or not, uh, and you can ask a uh, qu- you know uh, one or two questions, uh, and uh, there's a chance that uh, we answer them here on the podcast. We do every single week. 
Speaking of every week, next week, uh, we're going to try and do a podcast. But it might not happen. It might not happen, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll try and splice something together. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, we will be in a different the next, place. The next couple of weeks well, are yeah. going to be fucking It's going to be wild. I mean, weird. if we go to TwitchCon, we definitely won't be doing one no. then. But we're going to try, we'll try and get one in on, uh, next Thursday. We'll try and make the magic It'll probably happen. just be another temporary set in my main room until we figure out because Adam and I got to get together and we got to plan out the room and yeah. carpet things and probably use... Fu- I don't know what we're going to do, but we'll uh, figure that out. It, well, uh, that episode's just going to sound bad. Yes. There's, there's, Plain there's, and simple. That's it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not about to go over there and start carpeting the walls. It's just going to sound bad. There you go. We'll eventually get back to sounding a little better, but... Uh, but until yeah. then. Until then. Bad sound. Uh, hey, Jeff. Will asks, what songs have you heard too much that uh, you always skip or turn them down when you hear them? Um, that song, um, oh, that was, oh, uh, hey there, Delilah. That's the, uh, here, Del- that Delilah song. Yeah, hey, hey there, Delilah. Fuck, man, that shit. Hey I- there, Delilah, what's oh. it like in New York City? That's I'm a it. thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty, fuck my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the song. that was actually the I- most played song on the radio I've ever heard in my lifetime. I can't even listen to it anymore, bro. As soon as I hear it. Well, dude, when that was when that first came out, you were still working Dollarama with your mom, mm. and it was on the radio once every three songs, <laughs> twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, for at least nine months. Yep. That shit was over. I, no song has even like I can't Titanic. think of a song that's yeah, <laughs> that, like, my yeah, heart will go yeah, on. And me, yeah, that would be about the closest one I can think of. Yeah, shit was crazy, and I can still listen to that though. Um, I can't listen to pretty much anything by Ed Sheeran, dude. So, so here's the thing with Ed Sheeran, all right? I'm played out from Ed Sheeran, and for one reason. <laughs> why, is it, why is that? So when Kai was just coming home, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, mm-hmm. Kayla was playing some Ed Sheeran. Okay. All right, just kind of rocking Kai or whatever. Kai sucking on a titty. And Kai would go to sleep mm. to Ed Sheeran. Oh. So now, oh. just about every day, when Ch- Kayla's trying to put him down, she tries that magic thing where it's like, okay, if this isn't working, we're going to Ed. And so Ed Sheeran is played like on repeat. Oh, no. And then I hear Kayla singing it. Oh, no. And then I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Take me now. <laughs> Ed Sheeran, stop the madness. Get out of my house. Just get out of my house, Ed. <laughs> but does it work? I don't even think so, bro. <laughs> I, I think it's, it's just played so much that it's eventually going to work by default. Like placebo effect. That's it. So, but yeah, yeah, Ed Sheeran for me, I can't, I can't fucking do it. And then other than that, um, um, oh f- fuck, there's a song I will never, I will never in a million years be able to remember the name, uh, the name of it. Uh, but it's played so much on the radio recently, and it might be one of the worst written and sung songs I've ever heard. Great. Period. Um, it's kind of like. I don't even know what genre it slots into. It's like emo, emo r- r- rap pop is the closest I can come up with. Sounds like AIDS. Um, I'm dead serious. It's the worst sung, like popular song and worst written. Like I think one of the lines is like one of the lines really gets me. It's It's like. Oh, fuck, I wish I remembered even one of the lines. Um, fuck. Oh, it's probably a good thing I can't remember. Yeah, it sounds like AIDS, bro. Dude, it's it's if I if I catch it again, I'll for the next podcast or whatever, I'll let you know. Um, no, not Billie Eilish is back. Billy, I can listen to Billie Eilish. You know, it doesn't it doesn't make me want to kill myself. This song is fucking awful. Um, holy shit, I'm getting tired. Yeah, we're almost there. Long day. We're almost there. Uh, Mark, uh, Mark Furry asks, Adam, if you call your girlfriend M, does she call you Bond? Oh, as in like M being the, uh, is there a secretary anywhere? Uh, no. When do we not get to call her M? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's just, that's it. I mean, her name is Marcel, but I just call her M. Oh, okay. I thought you weren't trying to say her name purposely. Oh, no, no, it's, oh, okay. it's Marcel, but okay. I just, I just call her M. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, that's, I give, cause I give lots of people nicknames. And one syllable. What does she think about M? Easier than two. She likes it. She thumbs up. Okay. She thumbs up on M. All so right. She likes stuck. it. In fact, uh, what, she has not Marcy in, or 
anything no like, that. like she's got like she like uh, it's like a thing for her friends and of which she has many i've said this before everyone nicknames everyone she's mm. got like three different nicknames i'd have to call her mars Mar- <laughs> what's up mars, mars. <laughs> huh give her the business she's used to having a thousand nicknames well so when i see her i'm gonna say hey what's thousand and one nice to meet you mars. Uh, uncle john who you called her um is it uh oh how did that go Oh, it went, it went amazing. She she loves family. Cool. Was, yeah. Um, uh, what do you call her? Uh, what's Trump's wife's name again? Oh, fucking. Um, uh, starts with an M as well. Ivanka, fucking uh, Vianca. No, Ivanka's uh, Ivanka. his, his daughter. Oh, fuck. I don't um, fucking know, bro. Oh, um, oh, shit. What's her name? Chat, please help me out here, for God's sake. What's her name? Trump's wife's name. Um, She's so not important that we don't even know her damn name. Oh. Malia? Oh, no, Melania. 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 Yeah, yeah uh, John John was, like, struggling to remember her actual name, so he, like, he accidentally said Melania a couple of times, and he said, all right, well, now you're known as Melania, so. Great. Great. There you go. Thank you. Um, But no, she does not call me Bond. She has a name in her, in her dialect that she calls me. Uh... <sighs> Wait, all right, hold on. I have to I have to screen something before. Nope. That's no, probably not safe. <laughs> I'm gonna skip that one. Uh, uh, uh let's see. Uh Brain Doc Dre asks, ever try your hand at investing for stocks, bonds, real estate, etc. Were you successful at turning a profit? Any tips to the for the community? Uh tips are probably a bad idea. I mean, Jeff, you're into real estate. By the nature of every time you move, you keep the last house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, real estate's great. Have you done any... Uh, any, any no, well, none of that shit, bro. I, no. All my money is tied up in, in real, real estate. estate. That's pretty much where it is. It's not the worst place to put it, honestly. Well, somebody's got to... Uh, there's always going to be more and more people, and people are going to need places to live. Yep. And uh, it's not for everybody, because it's a grind, yep. and it's a long-term play. Yeah. But uh, it's actually quite rewarding. It's fun. I like real estate. It's just... Yeah. Uh, it interests me. Uh, years ago, I did, I did some, I, I fucked around with stocks for fun and I made five or six thousand dollars and then I got out and I was like, all right, well, that was fun. Do I have tips? Nope. (laughs) None, none here. Zero. I wouldn't be the guy to ask. Uh, let's see. What the? Oh, you're trying to. Yeah, I was just trying to log in. Okay, here, here, here. Real quick, that's the. All right. The last one there. Yep. There you go. Gotcha. Uh. Buy buy GameStop stock. Don't actually do that. Buy now. Don't. Short, 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 short game, short stuff. game stuff. <laughs> short the fuck out of it. Uh, Jamaican Jazz asks: Now that Tinder Files is on a hiatus, is there any new segments that you guys are thinking about adding to the podcast? Not that there's anything wrong with the current format, or is there anything that you have considered adding that you haven't heard about yet? Uh, not really. Uh, the the Tinder Files was just kind of a meme that cropped up because I was in the midst of online dating. But uh, uh, no, I mean, uh, the format is is working it right now. Yeah. But if anything pops up, you know us. We're fucking we're we're fucking random. You never know what's you gonna happen. You never know. Things happen organically. You never know what's happening around here. Shit just just happens. Um mm. <laughs> I know the answer to this, but I gotta ask it anyway. Chico is asking, Hey Jeff, does Adam have the N word pass? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> But sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes I can give him a pass. I've never know? actually even and slipped. It, yeah, uh, no, you've never said it. No. Ever. I have lots of white friends that like. Casually drop? Yeah, but they, they're cautious around me. But mm. sometimes they'll, it, it'll slip and then they'll kind of look at me like to see my reaction. And I'll be like, don't worry, yeah. don't worry about it, bro. It's all, all right. good. Yeah. I don't, I don't, let, just, it, I don't I never, let it slip. I've never heard it. Dude, I've tried to coax my wife and drop it an end bomb on many, many, many occasions. You don't want to start because then just when you do don't it. mean to, yeah. it just happens. It'll slip, yeah. Right? And then you're fucked. If you get in, a, if you get in the habit of saying it, then yeah, thank God I was never the type of person that ever... The only time I ever drop end bombs is when I'm around like two of my cousins and we usually say it 
like a, in a, in a joking manner. Like yes. we're, we're like it's like a total joke, and because yeah. we, we both never say it, so when we when we do see each other and we say it, we just kind of laugh about yeah. it. Yeah. But other than that, like I just don't say it. The only time I ever use it is if I'm talking about it in the context of the discussion about talking about the yes, word. Yes, yes. I've heard I've heard you say the word. Yes. But you're talking. Yes. It, and yeah. that's the only time I ever personally yes. use it is in that context. Anything outside of that context, I tell people just don't fuck with it, bro. <laughs> it's just don't. Yeah. Like I know I know everyone wants to take the root of you know words don't hurt and all that kind of shit, but there are just some words that no matter how hard you want to apply that logic to everything, just don't do it. Ju- it's just it's just easier. Like there's nothing that's that's gonna hurt you. Not saying it, mm. you're not losing anything. It's not a particularly you know amazing word to begin with. It's mm. not like you're losing the word fuck, where you can use it for every word in a sentence. It's not versatile. It doesn't mean anything to you, especially if you're white. Yep. So just drop it. Don't, don't don't do it. Just don't fuck with it. Yeah, don't do it. There's a lot of words in my vocabulary that I should never have been saying that it took me a long time. Work that out of the system. To get that out of the system. I'm still to, working on some because of those. To, because today on, on the Twitch, uh, uh, on, in the Twitch world. Can't do it. Bruh. The, the, the 20-year-old, 21, 22-year-old Jeff. 23-year-old Jeff. Oh, yeah. Banned. Gone. Instantly. Gone. So I just, I just completely dropped that out of my vocab. And you see people all the time on Twitch too. They'll just accidentally say a word that, and then they immediately they're like, ah, like, oh, uh, yeah, they're like, fuck. fuck now I got to worry. And they didn't mean they didn't mean to like you know, but it's just because they. But they say, know they know. Like, it's just somebody's gonna report it's it. 2019, bruh. Yeah. 2019. You know bruh. what? You know what? You know what they could have done to feel less worried about that situation? Just showed their vagina. That's fine. Uh, Graphic is asking or saying anyway. I don't know where the question is in all of this. There is a couple of question marks. You just talked about sending out the Patreon packages. How mm-hmm. high is the postal rates for sending stuff within we Canada? Just we just that. talked about that in comparison to sending the states. So from here to Vancouver, which is uh, across the country, sixteen bucks. From here to uh, California, also across the country and across the border, eight to ten. Great, makes a whole lot of sense. Loads. And loads of sense. Here, like a fucking hour away, 14 bucks. I think it's because within Canada, they just do flat rate shipping. Uh, and they, for- they force you to have tracking on everything. Great. So you're paying for basically the most expensive shit anywhere within Canada. Wonderful. Um, it's dumb. Uh, that made me curious. How much are the rates for sending packages in, uh, from Canada to Europe? Not much more than the States. Mm. Actually, Europe is still cheaper. Basically, anywhere that isn't within Canada... Is cheaper. I mean, we were sending no joke to like Taiwan, cheaper than Canada, cheaper than Kentville. Mm. An hour from here by car. Yes, it's not even an hour. Not even. It's like forty-five minutes. Yeah, that's more expensive than shipping to Taiwan. <laughs> uh, were you surprised by how inexpensive some destinations were? No, just disappointed. It's just fucking <laughs> Canada. <laughs> It's just like flying within this country. Yeah, it's a horrible. fucking gong God, show. Uh, flying from here to Toronto as expensive as flying from here to California, and once again, doesn't make any sense. Dick all. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. That's been another Technical Alpha podcast. We made it. It's time to let Jeff relax. Uh, are you getting back on the RP train? Fuck tonight? no, bro. I streamed nine hours this uh, you're morning, done. and then we just did like another two. You're packing her in. I'm literally packing her in, and, and then I'm packing, packing more shit in. Yes. And I'm going to sleep. I'm going to be in bed by like 10 p.m. a boy. And I'm going to wake up probably, you know, hella early because I got to drive out like an hour to go get an MRI and have to be there like a half hour before my appointment, and my appointment's at 9.30, and it's an hour away. So I'm probably going to leave here at like 7.30 in the morning. 10 out of 10. And then I'm going to do that crushing it then i'm gonna go see the lawyer write mm-hmm. a big check mm-hmm. go house bro- broke and then come home and uh stream and uh pack the last bit of shit and then we're gonna move on monday and tuesday incredible i'm just gonna edit this podcast that's about it there Ladies it is jump. we'll see you guys possibly hey next week Hey, well, we we should, uh, but you're you're not gonna see this set anymore. So say goodbye. This is it. Goodbye. Say goodbye to this old set and.
The new set won't have all these games because no. their games are going to be in my other room. It's going to so be a boring ass looking podcast. We're going to fix. Well, you know, I'll have a bunch of consoles, so maybe we can do the console setup and stuff yeah. behind us. We can do like a bunch of different and a few games like on display. Figure, we're going to figure some. Maybe shit our out. favorite games on each side behind us. <sighs> oh, now we're asking a lot. I mean, yeah, we're, we got to get those posters though. Eventually. That'd be dope. It would look kind of, uh, it kind of look a little, uh, little uh, conceited to have literally giant heads of both of us behind it, us. Yeah, it would. well, maybe just the big weird. logo. Just the logo. We maybe. can have a TV finally. Yeah. Like I can probably take this console, like this actual thing. Yeah. And then we can put a TV in there in the consoles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll figure because this won't we'll be in my shit. main room, but these just the shelves, this, the the game shelves. Okay, will be in so the room. we'll use this then. Yes, this won't be with me in my streaming room. So we'll use this middle one, and then we'll come up with some shit on the sides. Exactly. And uh, we'll make it pretty. Make it happen. Maybe the lag to be logo on one side and the technical alpha. Maybe logo we'll get on the other. Uh, my other Elgato. Oh, because we don't have a, te- a, a new the lag TV logo hasn't been printed yet. Boom. You can make that happen. Boom. I'll put that on my red bubble store now. Shook it ain't. <laughs> so there it is. Hit that like button, guys. This is uh, this is uh, the 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 last of a, of a of a of a generation. It is of a season. Maybe it's like going to be a new season. Uh, I could technically uh, do that. I was trying to get it to the point where the seasons technical were... alpha. Ba- oh wait, we're already there. Technical. What's after alpha? Beta? Just the game. Beta. Oh, it's beta. That's right. Technical beta. Yeah, probably not, though. No, because then you got to kind of rebrand it. Yeah, no, I went through way too much effort branding this shit. Yeah, okay, yeah. No, We're locking that okay, bad boy It's technical alpha, like, season... And I don't know if you've realized, but if you watched us try and do this thing, mm. it ain't it ain't leaving alpha. Fuck no, it's forever it's alpha. Ba- well, we're moving into a new spot. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a fucking gong show for about probably two months. We're going to say it's technical alpha. Sound's going to be fucky. Back, back, everything's going to be fucky <laughs> until eventually we get it to, like, you know... Alpha 1.01. 1. Boom. <laughs> patch. It's a patch. It's note. a patch. There it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you possibly next week. And until uh, we do, stay safe. Have a good one. Peace.